The following is a production of CUTV Sports. When the California Vulcans and the IUP Crimson Hawks met for the first time on the gridiron in October of 1918, a rivalry was born. Both teams have shown their dominance with IUP winning 20 straight matchups from 1985 until 2004 and California looking for their 7th straight win. On the line is positioning in the PSAC West as well as the Coal Miners Pale Trophy. Pole Bowl 5 from Miller Stadium, next. Hello everyone and we welcome you to the George P. Miller Stadium, Miller Stadium for the 5th Annual Coal Bowl featuring the Vulcans of California University and the Crimson Hawks of IUP. My name is Tyler Harris and next to me is Zach Lamar and Zach, of course we all know this is a big rivalry and I'm sure it's going to produce an interesting outcome. Absolutely Tyler, this rivalry can give you bragging rights over a team that's only an hour and a half away from you, but the most important thing is it gives a leg up for the top team in the PSAC West. IUP won the uh, division last year, Cal U winning it the past seven years before that, so this game will produce uh, a winner at the end of the season in the division for PSAC Conference. I'm sure it will. Last game for California, helping their record out overall as they defeated Edinburgh. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that one? Yeah, in their PSAC West opener, they defeated Edinburgh 20-7, to and it was a big, wet, sloppy day at Adamson Stadium. The most important thing, though, California did not let Edinburgh score a touchdown. There were two safeties and a field goal. If California's defense can replicate that today, they have a good chance of coming away with a victory. IEP kind of duplicated that same thing on defense, Zach, not allowing Seton Hill to score anything. Absolutely, Tyler. They defeated Seton Hill 26-0. Now, Seton Hill is not the highest of competition, but IUP is still coming in with a 3-0 record, 1-0 in the division. So these are two unbeaten teams that are going to go head-to-head -head today and hopefully give us a good sight to see today. Oh, I'm sure they will, but the serious history between these two teams, Zach, is a good sight to see as it is. Absolutely. IUP has a 55-23-2 record over California in the series history. Now we look at last year, though, California came away with a big victory in the last seconds. Cody Nuzzo kicking a game-winning field goal after missing an extra point that would have tied the game. And they have won all four of the Coal Bowls, Tyler. So that momentum, they might have that mindset coming in today. Just don't let that overtake your mind. Coming in here to Miller Stadium, trying to beat an IUP team ranked number eight in the nation. Absolutely, but there are player to watch for, players to watch for in this game, Zach. Of course, we're going to start with California. Who are we looking for on offense and defense? Well, for offense, we have to go Mike Williams. He's the number one receiver for this team. Cody Schroeder is connecting with him very well so far. He has over 200 receiving yards in three games. Now for defense, Dewey McDonald has been a very good replacement for Rontez Miles, who departed last season. And he came over the big interception return for a touchdown last week that propelled the Vulcans to victory. He will be a big cog in the defense today for the Vulcans. Now, who can we look for for IUP, Zach? Well, for the IUP offense, we have to go to the quarterback, Mike Box. He's a big quarterback. He can rush as well. The one key thing, though, he has four interceptions on the year, and his efficiency is not that great. So if Cal's defense can really pressure him, he might be forced into some mistakes. And now for defense, Shane Meisner comes in leading the Crimson Hawks with two sacks on the season. So two sacks in three games might not be a lot of production, but being the sack leader, you expect him to get some pressure on Cody Schroeder and the O-line today. It's going to be a very interesting game, Zach. It's Cal U, it's IUP, and it's next right here on CUTV.
With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. There is a university built on an uncommon dedication to the whole student, where core values of integrity, civility, and responsibility are not just taught, but integrated into academic experience. Creating a learning environment for personal life as well as professional life. California University of Pennsylvania. Hello everybody and we welcome you back to the 2013 Cole Bowl at George P. Miller Stadium. Again, we this Cole Bowl will be featuring the California Vulcans of California and the Crimson Hawks of IUP. This game again is presented by the Pennsylvania Coal Lines. We'd also like to thank the following participating sponsors. Alpha Natural Resources, Caterpillar, Console Energy, United Mine Workers of America, and of course, the Washington County Tourism Agency. We thank you all very much for your support of the Coal Bowl. And Zach, as we all know, this is a very big game. A lot of atmosphere in the crowd right now, Zach. Uh, the crowd is very energated. Um, we got the team in the back of the end zone right now, but let's go ahead and look at the tail of the tape. And as we see, IEP, kind of the favorite in this one. Yeah, looking at the statistics based off the tail of the tape, you would think that they are the favorite, especially being at home as well. They get the home field advantage, outscoring Cal by six points. The rushing is better. Where they lack, though, is Cal has a better passing offense with Cody Schroeder, and Cal has a better turnover margin, plus three. IUP is even, and I think that what that is what really might play into Cal's favor. They can get some turnovers off their defense and hold on to the ball. They could come away with the victory today here at George P. Miller Stadium. Yeah, I think you're right, Zach. Being able to control the ball on offense more, uh, keeping your offense out there. They run a very controlled offense, Cal does. It's very fast-paced, but it's very controlled as well. So I think that can help them out substantially in this game, especially against a very tough IUP offense. You don't want your defense out there too long to get worn out. And Tyler, we're going to look at the uh, weather now. It is a nice, sunny day. It's a little chilly. Based off the wind, hopefully that doesn't play a factor into the passing offenses. You see it is 73 degrees, 5 mile an hour winds, and a 5% chance of rain. But the way it looks right now, there's a few clouds in the sky, bright blue sky. Everything's perfect. Football weather, as we are about to see IEP run out to the field and California. Yeah, definitely. But the weather, going back to two years ago when it was known as the Snow Bowl here up at IUP, uh, a lot of snow. Um, next, last year, a pretty nice weather. So this year, very nice weather. And we're fortunate to see that. So we know the weather's not going to play a factor in this game. It's going to come down to which of these two teams is overall the best today. As I mean, there's a lot of hype in the crowd right now. As we see IUP storm through their tunnel, led by the Crimson Hawk. And then we have California as well coming through the middle in their away white jersey, Zach. 
The crowd is going wild right now. It's a great atmosphere. It's one of the, probably the biggest rivalries, I would say, in Division II. Maybe all of college football, Zach, is a very big rivalry, and it's going to be interesting to see how this really goes. Yeah, these are two teams that are really known around all of college football, especially IUP being number seven in the nation in D2. They're a big program. California's had a lot of players go to the pro level in the NFL. Most recently, Rontez Miles and Eric Cush getting there. So this is a big rivalry game. One of the best, like you said. And what I like the most is California fans showed up today too. You look over in the visiting stands and it almost looks completely full. You have the Cal U marching band and their color guard as well. Everyone came here today to hopefully see California bring back the uh, trophy from the Coal Bowl again for the fifth time in a row. Yeah, the Olympic caught Coal Pell trophy. It's definitely one they both, either one of these teams are really going to be wanting to hoist at the end of this game, but at the end of the season, they're going to be wanting to hoist, hoist up that PSAC West Championship trophy as well. And this is a good game to get a leg up on the competition. Um, it's very, very possible if you win this game that you have great odds to win the PSAC West. But there's still a lot of season to play, Zach, so anything can happen. But I expect it to come down to probably these two teams. Uh, but like I said, you never know with the PSAC West. A lot of good competition, especially with Slippery Rock, Mercyhurst. The list goes on and on. Clarion starting out the season 3-0 as well, so we never know what could happen. As these, both of these teams get hyped, you see California on the screen right now getting hyped up. The band in the background, the cheerleaders jumping up and down, waving their pom-poms. This absolutely great atmosphere, Zach. I can't express it enough. This is going to be an amazing game, and I'm glad you folks tuned in to watch it because I'm sure you won't be disappointed at all. Yeah, Tyler, the only atmosphere I think that could possibly get better is maybe the PSAC Championship game. You and I have not yet been able to attend one of those. As we look now, IUP will kick off the ball first. California back to receive with Terrell Roberson. And I believe that's Derek Fiore, Jerry Brown. This is funny for this game, Tyler. So Fiore and Roberson back to receive as we are about to get action underway. Brent Ullman is set to kick for Indiana, the Crimson Hawks. A big rivalry game. The crowd is on their feet. They're clapping. They're ready to go. Zach, an amazing atmosphere here as kickoff is right around the corner for the fifth annual Cold Bowl. And the kickoff is away. It will be received by Roberson in the back of the end zone. He's going to take it out. He's going to go to the middle, finds some open space, but met immediately by a very strong defender. That's going to be number 41, Ryan McCauley. Great stop by the special teams. Absolute big stop. I'm surprised that Roberson took it out of the end zone and returned it. We're going to look at the starters now. Cody Schroeder at quarterback, Jeff Knox at tailback, and then your three receivers, Williams, Scott, and Johnson. They've really produced a lot for Cody Schroeder early on in the season, especially Johnson and Williams. Kawan Scott, what he brings, he's that tall receiver, six foot four, and he's only a sophomore, so he only has room to grow quite figuratively, I guess you could say, because he's already six foot four, but as the years go on in his career. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. We see California's offense taking field first. Jeff Knox back with two receivers to his left. Schroeder takes a snap and hands it off to Jeff Knox up the middle. He's going to go to the right side and be brought down for a very short gain, maybe of one yard. And now, Tyler, we'll look at IUP's defense. Shane Meisner, we touched on him in the opener. He leads the IUP Crimson Hawks with two sacks on the season and four tackles for loss. Their defensive line is really going to be a big part of this team today, stopping the rush like they just did on first down. Absolutely. Cody Schroeder now has a sidecar to his right as he's in shotgun formation. Four receivers. Hands the ball off to Jeff Knox. He's going to take it up the middle for another short gain. Third down coming for the team. And there's a flag on the play, Zach. I believe this is going to be a personal foul against IUP. We'll see what the refs decide. A lot of extracurricular activities at the end of the play. They don't want The refs don't want this game to get out of control, Zach. Uh, so I can understand the early flags here. They're going to try to control the game a little bit, not let it get out of hand. That is going to go against IUP, Zach. Uh, something that they don't want to make a costly mistake of early in this game. That should drive them back for, I believe, a first down. Actually, no, because they're going to give an offsetting foul 
to California. It's actually going to only be on California, nothing on IEP. So this is going to push back California even further. It's going to be about what I believe third and 16 maybe for California. So a big deficit to overcome here on third down. Yeah, that is Trey Johnson, the senior receiver. You don't want to see that early on in the game from the Vulcans. Don't want to have pressure crack under them. A big third and long now. You have five receivers out there for the Vulcans. And it'll be a hand up right up the middle as they gain very little yardage. It's going to be fourth down and long. And I'm guessing California's just going to look to punt the first possession away. Yeah, California really kind of lost it on that possession. Jeff Knox with another run up the middle for a few yards. Brings up fourth and 10 with the ball on about the 11 or the 16 yard line. Excuse me, Andrew Surrett in for his first punt of the day on California's first offensive drive. Terrell Barnes back to receive for IUP. He's a senior, so he's looking to make a big impression on this game. The punt is away, almost blocked. It's a nice, long, high punt. He's going to take it himself. He's going to go up the right side, breaks one tackle, uses his speed to get past the others and goes out of bounds right around the 48-yard line. Pretty good return, but we see a flag on the play, Zach. California's defensive starters now. You see Noah Taylor on the defensive end spot, Anthony McPoyle at nose tackle. And B.J. Stevens is coming up big. He had a quiet first game at Hillsdale. Last two games has really produced a lot. And the guy we touched on, Dewey McDonald, interception return for a touchdown last week against Edinburgh. He's been a big replacement for Rontez Miles, who graduated and went to the pro level last season. Illegal hands to the face penalty on the receiving team. So that's going to push IEP back a little bit. And it's going to be what looks like first and 10 for IUP. Ball's yeah. going to be spotted right around the 35-yard line. And it's still good field position for IUP to start their first drive. It negates the big return by Barnes, but IUP still has some room to work. They're not backed up in their own end zone, and they have uh, 65 yards to drive to try and get in the end zone. Box under center. He's got a back behind him. He's going to hand it off to him and he's going to get stopped right at the line of scrimmage for no gain at all. Big defensive stop for California. California right there, you saw why we touched on the defensive line. As we look at IUP's offense, Mike Box, the redshirt senior quarterback, in for the IUP Crimson Hawks, and then Terrell Barnes and Pat Brewer at wide receiver. I'm sure Box is gonna try and find them a lot today. Terrell Barnes, we already mentioned him, on the kickoff return. De'Antoine Williams. A transfer from the University of Connecticut. I'm sure he's going to get a lot of touches today, too. Box has two receivers to his left in the I formation. He's going to hand it off to Williams. Williams is going to take it up the middle for about a gain of six yards. It'll be third down for the Crimson Hawks. And the tackle right there by Branko Busick. We've really not called his name a lot, but he's been a key cog right at the middle for California's defense. And one thing to note, Darnell Harding, we saw him before in workouts before the game. Currently, I do not see him on the field, Tyler, so we'll have to see if he's in there, but Branko Busick has done a good job playing the middle linebacker spot. Three receivers for Box. Two to his right, one to his left. Single back formation. Box is going to take it, hand it off to Williams. Williams is going to get stopped before he gets to the first down line, and it's going to be fourth down. Big defensive stop for the Vulcans this time. And California's rush defense has been really well this year or it's done really well this year, excuse me. They led up a little bit last week to Edinburgh, but that's because Edinburgh didn't have Cody Harris there to throw the ball for them. And it was a very rainy day, so running the ball was going to come at a premium for both teams, as now the punt will come from IUP. Fourth and three. Might see a fake here, but maybe not. Nope, the punt's going to be away, almost blocked by the California player. Air Trey back to receive it. He's going to let that one bounce into the end, and it'll be a touchback. California will take the ball to the 20-yard line. And I'm looking to see who that was almost on the block. Looked like it might have been number 95. As we look at when California has the ball on offense, they're scoring 29 points. And IUP's defense only lining up about seven points. Rushing yards, 95.3 a game and against 86.3 for Cal. But passing is where California is really going to have a tough time. IUP only giving up 132 yards. Cal is averaging 265 a game so far through three games. It's going to be interesting to see how Cody Schroeder adjusts. Uh, he's adjusted very well since the season started. I'm sure he's capable of doing it again. He's going to be in the shotgun formation. Three receivers to his left side, car to his left. He's going to look left. He's going to pass. It's going to be completed over to the left sideline, and he's going to be st stood up eventually and brought down 
right around the 26 yard line, a small gain for the California Vulcans. That is going to be a gain of about three, Tyler. As right there we have referees saying helmet came off for a player, he must sit out for a play. I believe that's number five, Nadir Brown, as he ran off the sideline. Right now it is going to be second and seven from the 23. But that's not where the ball is spotted, Tyler. It looks like it's more at the 26. It's going to be a hand up up the middle to what looks like Nick Grissom, and he's going to take it for a first down. Big run there to about the 36-yard line. And Nick Grissom has really produced a lot when he's gotten his chances. Not a lot of them so far in the season. We saw him last week against Edinburgh. You see the hole open up right there. Plaza right through the middle. A big game for California. Makes it first and 10. Hurry up offense for California. Schroeder's got two receivers to his right. Single back formation. He's going to hand it off up the middle. That's Jeff Knox. And he's going to be met by the sea of burgundy red jerseys for a short gain of maybe two yards. Jeff Knox is the running back there. That really gets you your short yardage opportunities. Grissom can run it outside, and then Fiore can do a little bit of both. So California having a trio of running backs they can turn to and hopefully break down IUP's defense against the run. That's what they're going to look to do here is they're in a full house formation. Cody Schroeder taking his time to read the defense. Schroeder takes a snap, looks right, throws immediately to Trey Johnson. It's going to be caught. And he's going to be brought down for maybe a gain of nothing. It looks like he's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. IUP's defense really read that well on the short screen pass. It'll bring up third and nine from the 37-yard line. So California faced with another third and long. They failed their first time. Let's see if they can get the job done here. Third down for Schroeder. Side guard to his right. That's Knox. Three receivers to the left. Schroeder takes a snap. Looks left. He's going to throw. He has the open receiver, Mike Williams. And it looks like he might get the first down, but it's going to be close. The referees are going to have to decide on this one. And it looks like from where they're spotting the ball, he will get the first down. And they are moving the yard markers. So it will be a new first down for California. Mike Williams, your trusted senior receiver there. Always coming down with the grab, as you see on the replay. And then trying to get a few more yards before he heads out of bounds. Schroeder working that no huddle offense. Single back formation. Schroeder takes a snap, fakes the handoff, a little bit of play action, but that pass will be brought down and intercepted by the defensive line of IUP. That looks like it's going to be number 21. 21 on our rosters is Terrell Holloway, a Penn Hills player in high school, now turned IUP Crimson Hawk. Big play for IUP. When we see our replay, if we do get to it, it was a tremendous, there is going to be no replay, a tremendous athleticism on that one. Ball was tipped when Schroeder released it. I was surprised that an IUP player got there, but you see Holloway diving at the end when he was on your screen. Now we're going to look when the Crimson Hawks have the ball. They are averaging 35 points a game. Cal only letting up 12. IUP averaging 173 rushing yards a game, though. Cal... Like we said, a stout run defense. DeAntoine Williams to thank for that. As Box is past the throw, he's going to throw to right, finds his open receiver, and it goes up the right sideline, and he'll be brought down right around the 15-yard line. Big first down play for the Crimson Hawks. And for the Crimson Hawks, that reception was number 15, Drew Carswell, a redshirt junior. That is the first pass completion of the day for Mike Box, and they are going to be in the red zone now, first and 10 from the 17. Big play for their IEP. Good field position to start the drive off the interception. Now they're going to look to put it in the end zone. And you can't blame them because that's the whole goal of the game, Zach. As Box is under center, he's got two receivers to his left. And then Williams back behind him, obviously, as the running back. He's going to hand it off to Williams. Williams is going to go up the middle but find no open holes. And he'll be brought down right around the line of scrimmage for second down. Looks like he might have gained two yards on that one, Tyler. Based on the spot, they'll mark him about the 16-yard line, so maybe a gain of one on the play. It'll be second and nine as it's marked on the board. IEP's really going to want to strike here on this possession because California's defense doesn't let up a lot of points during the game, so you have to take advantage of your opportunities. That 3-3-5 defense has been strong so far this year, Zach, but they're going to be tested here today against number seven in the nation. Fox is going to take the snap. Hands it off. Two is running back up the middle. And it'll be a pretty decent gain for a couple yards to be third and short for the Crimson Hawks. And they will look to get to about 
I believe it's the seven yard line. So it looks like they're gonna call it third and five from the 11. So he'll really need to get to the six, but the yard marker's at the seven. So about third and four really. IUP is gonna have to really have to convert this. They don't wanna just settle for the field goal. They wanna get the ball in the end zone and force California to be down by seven and not just three, and they could possibly take the lead later. Strike quick, that's the whole point of this game, to get momentum on your side early. Box is audible in the offense, doesn't like the play called. He's gonna take the snap, he's gonna hand it off to Williams on the left side, wide open room, as he tries to plow through California's defense, but he's brought down short of the end zone. Nonetheless, first down for the Crimson Hawks. And this will be first and goal. As you look at the replay, Williams able to find an outside running lane, and California's defense not able to catch up with him fast enough. So it'll be first and goal from the three, and IEP's in prime position to get the first points on the board. Absolutely, they're gonna be in the I formation. Receiver out four, that's Terrell Barnes. Box is gonna take the snap, hand it off to Williams. Williams will get into the end zone, and that's a touchdown, Crimson Hawks. Reservations for six. And a great run play right there by Williams. We saw he had some success as we hear the cannon go off near the back of the end zone. You see on your replay, Williams able to generate some pressure right there in the open hole. Finds pay dirt, gets IUP on the board first. It currently stands at six nothing. As we know, it hasn't always been so big to score first in this game, Zach. It's always usually coming down to last minutes of the game where the game really gets exciting. But nonetheless, it's always great to have that momentum on your side as they go for the extra point. Brett Ullman kicks it. It's up, and it's going to be good. So the extra point is converted. IUP currently leads California 7-0. Stay tuned as we come back with the rest of the first quarter. High School Roundup, bringing you the best coverage of high school football in Western Pennsylvania. Tune in for scores, highlights, analysis, and the best plays from the previous week, plus previews and predictions of the week's biggest games, standings from across the region, and news from around the state. High School Roundup. Catch it. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on CUTV. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And we welcome you back to the IUP Crimson Hawks home stadium here as they look to kick off back to the California Vulcans after scoring on that last drive. The Williams getting the touchdown rush on that one from a couple yards out. So California looking to hurry up and strike back as the kickoff is away, it's going to be caught by Roberson, and he's going to take it back out again as he's halfway into the end zone, but he's going to take it out. He finds some open room, and he's going to go out right around the 35-yard line. A pretty punishing uh, hit there from the kicker, Brett Ullman. Pretty impressive hit there from a the kicker. And we look at the return now, Tyler. Finds some open lanes, and then the kicker steps up and pushes him out of bounds. That is Terrell Roberson, a cornerback, so a small player. Ullman showing us some strength there, though, and preventing a touchdown for California. As we take a look at some of the game notes here for California, they are 19 and 18 versus top 25 teams since 2000. They won against IUP three times in the last uh, few years here, so uh, California has the advantage as Jeff Knox takes up the left side, and he's going to be brought down for a gain of about maybe two yards. It's going to be about a gain of one for Jeff Knox. Jeff Knox still not finding those open holes up the middle. IEP's defense really clogging them. As Cody Schroeder still trying to run the no huddle offense, it's not really produced anything yet, but if they keep doing it, they might start to wear down the Crimson Hawks. That's the name of the game. They've been doing it all season, Zach, trying to wear down defenses. They've done pretty well with it so far. Schroeder under center. He's gonna check real quick. 619 left in this one, in the first quarter at least. Schroeder still checking on what he sees, tries to get the defensive line off sides. 
He's going to take the snap, hands it off to Jeff Knox up the middle, and he's going to run for a very short gain of a couple yards. Brought down by number 99, James Price for IUP. That was a gain of about three. So it's going to be third and four from the 37 yard line. Cal or excuse me, third and four from the 42 with 547 left in the first quarter. California really needs to convert this if they want to get something going on offense. A lot of confusion on defense earlier there for Cal uh, for IUP rather, now that the Cillian two have settled themselves out. Schroeder's under center scanning the defense though. He's got two receivers to his right. He's gonna look to a couple of them and he's going to throw it to Mike Williams. He's open and out of bounds right around the 48 yard line. That converts for a first down though. And Mike Williams has his name called again on third down. That's two drives in a row. He's converted a third down opportunity. Look right there, catches the pass, tries to run up field, steps out of bounds. You can always rely on Mike Williams, the senior receiver, on third down like Cody Schroeder does. We've seen that play often on third downs to Mike Williams as he kind of runs a quick little post route to the outside to the sidelines and just get out of bounds. He knows where the first down marker is, so he gets the first down and makes sure uh, he does so. But Schroeder will be back, side guard to his left. He's going to hand it off to him. That's Jeff, Jeff Knox. Jeff Knox will take it upfield on a second effort. Gets a gain of about six oh, yards. Oh, so a pretty good carry there for Jeff Knox. That's going to bring the ball out to the 42 in IUP territory. This is the first time that Cal U has been in IUP territory today, if I can recall correctly. So uh, Cody Schroeder is really going to have to find some open holes and convert here. Shotgun formation again for Schroeder. He's checking, taking reads from the coach. He's got a back to his right. That's Jeff Knox. Two to his left. He looks to throw to the left on a wide receiver screen. Air Johnson trying to get open. Sheds one tackle, but he's brought down behind the original line of scrimmage for a loss of about two yards. And the screen passes just haven't worked for California yet today. Shea Johnson's had converted one of them out of three. IEP's corners are really reading that well. You see on the replay there, breaks out of one tackle, but still loses a couple yards. Brings up a third and seven from the 41. The Crimson Hawks have done their homework, Zach. They know exactly what California does and what they bring to the table. And it's a lot of screens from Air Johnson to Air Johnson. Trey Johnson uh, is his real name there. And a lot of post routes to Mike Williams. And, of course, a lot of up-the-middle handoffs to Jeff Knox. So they've done their homework as Schroeder takes a snap, looks to the right, finds an open receiver, but he's brought down immediately. Nonetheless, that is caught for a first down. Air Johnson getting up and catching that one. Big play for California. Trey Johnson might be a diminutive receiver. We like always to call him Air Trey or Air Johnson because he can get up there, Tyler. He showed that right there. Converting on a key third down to keep the drive going for California as they have first and 10 from the 28-yard line. Trey Johnson, not a very big man at all. He's only 5'6", 150 pounds, so he has to have hops to get up there. As we see, a pretty close formation to his left. A lot of blockers over there. A pitch to the left it is for Jeff Knox. He's going to take it up the left side closer to the middle and he's going to be brought down for a gain of about five maybe six yards good carry for jeff knox the running game really improving so far zach they really it really is tyler but it's going to be offsides on iup the penalty flag that will be declined as the gain was more than five yards so it'll bring up second and four instead of a clean first and five california deciding to go with the yards they picked up get some a bit closer to another first down. Absolutely, obviously the more yards the better and that's gonna help them in the long run as California enjoys the call on that one. It's going to be actually first and five, uh, first and four rather. Ball's gonna be spotted on the 21 yard line. Full house package for Schroeder. He's going to hand it off to his left. That's Nick Grissom. He's going to take it up the middle for maybe a gain of one or two yards. Derek Fiore, the other side car to his right in that formation. And Nick Grissom getting a couple more opportunities in the game. If Mike Keller can find a good rotation of the running backs, then they'll have a good opportunity to wear down the Crimson Hawks like we've said before, especially with the no huddle offense. One back back, and that is Fiore. He's got two receivers to his left, Mike Williams to his right. Scherzer's going to hand it off to Fiore. Up the left side he goes, but he's going to be brought down two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So no production on that play, on that run play. It's going to be third down. IUP, their defensive backs are just stopping everything that goes to the outside. They're really doing a good job. You see the corners there, pursuit against Fiore, and that will bring up another third down. It'll be about six to go. 
Third down for Schroeder and the Balkans. He's going to check back. He's going to take a look at what Mike Keller and the offensive coach has to say about this defensive formation. He's got a side corner to his right. That's Fiore. Two backs, two wide receivers to his right. He's going to snap, take the back, and look and throw. That's going to be batted away. It's going to be fourth down for the Balkans, and I'm guessing you're going to see Cody Nuzo come out and attempt a field goal here. I don't know, Tyler, be because... They're so far into IEP territory, they might go for it here because it's a far kick. That would be a 41-yard field goal attempt. And California is going to go for it off fourth down. And the wind is not in their favor either, Zach, so that actually is not a smart call. They're going to go ahead and try to do the right thing and just go for it on fourth down. The IUP fans are cheering. The Cal U fans are cheering as well, but they're just a little bit more nervous than what these IUP fans are. Schroeder takes a snap, looks right, throws, open over the middle, and Trey Johnson violently gets flipped up and down, but he's okay, points for the first down. Trey Johnson, what kind of athleticism this kid has is absolutely impressive. That might be one we have to submit to Sports Center's top 10 plays, Tyler. You look at the replay, he is flipped mid-air, still comes down with the ball. A tremendous athletic catch from Trey Johnson. I've seen a lot of him in my day watching him that might be the best. He comes out, checks out for that play, and he deserves it. Schroeder takes a snap, hands it off to Jeff Knox up the middle. He's going to get a short gain for maybe a couple yards, but that's all you need at this point. It's first and goal. It's actually going to be second and goal now, Zach, and that's going to give about a gain of three yards. It'll be second and five from the six-yard line, they're calling it. So California actually might not need a touchdown to keep the drive going. It looks like, though, the yard markers say that they do, so we will call it second and goal. Schroeder has one back behind him. That's Jeff Knox. Two receivers to his left. Now Knox becomes a sidecar. Schroeder takes a snap, looks over to the left, throws, and it is not brought down by Desmian Green, that freshman tight end, the redshirt freshman from Clareton. That is the fourth tip we've seen today in this game, Tyler. Cal's receivers just not being able to get their hands on the ball. That's going to have to be a problem they fix. As we see Nadir Brown checking in for Desmond Green. Nadir Brown, the big tall receiver, six foot five on the offense. As it is third and seven from the seven, third and goal. California really needs to strike here. Schroeder's got three receivers to his left. Sidecar to his right, that's Knox. He's going to step back. He's looking to look left. He's going to throw. And it is intercepted in the end zone. And he's going to wisely go down. And that's his second interception on the day for IUP. That's 21 again. Terrell Holloway from Penn Hills High School. So coming up big on defense, Terrell is. Terrell Holloway playing the Sam back in the Hawks defense. Getting in the way of the passing lane there. Schroeder probably did not see him. You look on the replay there, wisely takes the knee down in the end zone. Brings the ball to the 20 instead of trying to run out. Getting all the way to about the two. So IUP is trying to continue to build their lead. Look at game notes. They've won three straight regular season games. They're 11 and two at home under current coach, Kurt Signetti. Handoff up the middle, it goes to Williams and it's gonna be brought down for about a gain of seven yards. So second and short for the Crimson Hawks as there is 37 seconds and counting left in this first quarter. So a good first quarter from, um, from IUP. So that's always good for them. And California looking to step up on defense now, not allow IEP to score any more points because they want to score one before, they want to score some points themselves before they allow IEP to score any more. Single back formation, receiver in motion. Box hands it off to Williams. Williams takes it up the middle for a gain of about a yard or two, but it won't be enough for the first down. And that will be the last play of the first quarter. And Tyler, that is the end of the first quarter, but I know we're not going to go to break. You had the chance to interview the CEO of the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance. A big opportunity for us here on CU TV to be able to interview such a high-ranking person for one of the key sponsors here for the Coal Bowl. Who is the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance? Well, Tyler, Pennsylvania Coal Alliance, we are the organization that represents the bituminous coal industry here. Pennsylvania. We have about over 300 companies involved in our organization from the mining companies to the, the manufacturing service providers, 41,000 jobs, and about $7.5 billion impact here in Pennsylvania. 
Who important is, how important rather, is coal in our region? Well, coal and, and domestic energy in general is, is critical to not only the economy, but also, we would argue, energy independence here for, for our Commonwealth. You know, we, we like to say that coal runs deep here in Pennsylvania. The roots, if you look at some of our older communities, our rural communities, you know, they were built up in, in and around the coal industry. Now we provide over 42% of the energy here to power our, our Commonwealth. and. Uh, coal in this country is about 50 percent, so it's a it's a very big impact. The jobs associated with it, and just the economic economic opportunities. It has been said that PA could become the energy capital of the world. Is that true? And is there an environmental cost? Well, very much so that we can become in the energy capital of the world. We are already the number three energy producing state in the country, uh, bet between coal, natural gas, nuclear. Uh, hydro, wind and solar, we can have a wonderful diverse portfolio there. We can keep very low energy costs for our consumers while we're selling that energy to a, 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 a world and, and a country that needs energy at a rapidly increasing pace. And I'm glad you brought up the environmental part. I'm an environmental engineer. Uh, what we need to do with any man-made activity is make sure that we use the best available technology to reduce our footprint so that we can have sustainable jobs, a, a clean environment, and family sustaining scenarios that will make just tremendous opportunities for all of us. All right, that should be good, thank you. And again, that was John Pippi, the CEO of the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance. We thank him very much for that interview. A very nice guy, Zach. Uh, very inspired and very passionate about his job as well, as coal is becoming a very, very big power source here in Pennsylvania. Absolutely, Tyler, and especially when he's one of the key sponsors for the Coal Bowl. It's always good to get the point of view from the company as well, and not just what it means to the game, but what it means especially to the state of Pennsylvania and the rest of the nation. And it's going to be third first down. and ten, third down, rather, third and short for the Crimson Hawks. Box under center, hands it off to Williams. A tough runner, and he breaks up the left side. Just almost stays on his feet, but he'll be brought down in between the 40, 45 yard line for a first down run for the Crimson Hawks. That is going to be all the way out to the 47 yard line, so a big run there for Williams. Cal U having trouble stopping him lately. The first drive, they were able to stall his running ability, but now recently, Williams has been able to find some holes outside and through the middle and purging down the field for a couple of big gains. DeAntoine Williams, like we said, is a former running back of D1 school, University of Connecticut, so he transferred here to IUP and he's making a big impact as the ball is handed off to him again, up the middle it goes, and he's gonna be brought down right around midfield, the 50 yard line is where we're gonna call it. Now at midfield, California's gonna have to start to buckle down. The run defense needs to be stout. Mike Box really hasn't had a lot of pass attempts today. I think there's only two on record and by my count, maybe even one. Uh, he's actually only one for one, Tyler. So IEP running running the ball down the throats of California, something Cal U really has to stop if they want to have a chance to stay competitive in this game. Absolutely, as they are still in the I formation. Well, actually, looks like a strong formation here. Full back to the right side of the quarterback. Box hands it off to Williams, and he's met immediately, but he stands up to it. He needs to be brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Forward progress might give him a few inches, but it's going to be third and short for the Crimson Hawks. And a good way to take the hit by Laquan Williams. A big collision course, we'll have to see that's number 44. That is Brian Justice for the Cal U defense. He's just not able to wrap him down for a loss. He keeps going, gains a couple. It will bring up third and three for the IEP Crimson Hawks. It's actually going to be marked as third and one, Zach. Forward progress, got him a few extra yards there. So uh, IEP very, very happy to see that. So Box will take the ball. He's going to look to pass. He's going to throw to his left side. And that ball is going to be batted down, almost intercepted, I believe. Uh, but no conversion on third down for the uh, Crimson Hawks. And I guess they're going to come bring out the punt team. Yeah, great job by Cal U's defense. We'll have to see on the replay who might have got the hand in there. I'm not sure. Might have been Noah Taylor or Anthony McPoyle, the freshman nose tackle. But nonetheless, Cal U able to stand up there, block the pass, and now now they're going to have to go back for the punt, but you always have to be aware of the fake, especially third and, or fourth and short. Coach Mike Williams has to be impressed with this defense so far today. Punt is away. Johnson back to receive it. 
And he's going to fair catch it right around what looks like the 15-yard line. And that's where Cody Schroeder and his offense are going to take and set up shop. Now, Tyler, we're going to look back in the Cole Bowl era of the IUP Cal rivalry. 20, or 2009, Cal won the first inaugural Cole Bowl, 41-28. They've actually won all of them, 2010, 18-15 in overtime, 28-10 in 2011. And, of course, last year, the thrilling finish, Cody Nuzo kicking the game winner with just under five seconds left to give Cal their fourth straight Cole Bowl victory. Yeah, even though they've only had four Cole Bowls and this being the fifth, they've met many times uh, in the past, a big rivalry, as we said, not just of recent times. But Schroeder's going to take the snap, hand it off to his running back up the middle, and he's going to be stopped dead. It looks like that was number one, Jeff Knox, on the carry. Jeff Knox, yet again, stopped for a short gain of one to three yards. Not producing a lot for Cal's offense. I'm surprised Cody Stroder hasn't looked to pass more. He's going on the short intermediate routes. He's done pretty well on those, except for the screen passes. And Trey Johnson's made some pretty athletic catches middle of the field as well. Those two interceptions might come back to haunt Schroeder as he checks up on offense, tries to draw the defensive line off. So far, defensive line not fooled at all in this game. He's got four receivers, two to his right, two to his left, sidecar to his left, and Jeff Knox. He takes a snap, hands it off over the middle, and again, a very short gain, maybe two yards to get that one a little bit closer to the first down marker. It's going to be third down and about five, though. Jeff Knox again with a short gain. And like you said, Tyler, those two interceptions might come back to haunt Schroeder. The last time he threw an interception was at Hillsdale. He had two in that game. Cal came back to win that one, but IUP is a much tougher opponent in my opinion. Cal's really going to have to work to get the victory here today. Absolutely. Schroeder back in shotgun formation. Jeff Knox to his right. Four receivers again. He takes a snap, looks left, and he throws on the post route. And there it is to Mike Williams, and it is stripped by IUP. I think they're going to call Mike Williams down, though, and I think that is correct. It's actually going to be incomplete as we take a look at the replay. Zach, Zach, walk me through this. Well, Schroeder is looking for Williams on third down again. Williams comes down with it, but I believe he never got full possession of the ball, and that's why they called it incomplete instead of a strip fumble. So a good break for California as Surrett will come on to punt now. Now, we look at this. Last week at, at, or against Edinburgh, they had struggles near their own end zone on the punt team. Hopefully that doesn't happen here against IUP. Surrett back to punt the ball away. The punt is up, and it is away. A long, high punt from Surrett. He's going to make the wide receiver run back on that one. It's going to bounce way back to about the five-yard line. Still rolling three, two, one. Took it at the one-yard line. What a punt from Andrew Surrett. He's got a, quite the leg on him. That was an absolutely beautiful punt, Tyler. That was a 79-yard punt. Amazing job. We look at the Know Your Foe. IUP was established in 1875. Their current enrollment just over 15,000. Colors are crimson and gray. And of course, they're the Crimson Hawks and their current president, Dr. Michael Driscoll. Yeah, a big series, a big, uh, big long history here for IUP. They've been around for a very long time. Uh, and they've been a rival of Cal U's for a very long time as well. So um, it is understandable as to why this is such a big game. But IUP now pinned back very, very far. We're almost at the one inch marker. But Box is going to take it, just try to get it out of his ends, and it looks like he's going to be successful in doing so. Almost like a, a rugby mall, and it'll be brought down for a gain of about four yards. So good job by IUP just getting the necessary yardage. And when we look at the replay, we're going to see the center for IUP really gets a big push up the middle of Cal's defensive line and enables Box to get out for a four-yard gain. It'll be second and six from the five-yard line now. It really gives IUP a little bit more room to work, although they're still back up to their own end zone. Yeah, great play by the offensive line there for IUP. Has had struggles over the past couple weeks, but now they proved so far so strong. Box under center. Takes a snap, hands it off to Williams up the left side, up the right side rather, and he's going to be brought down short of that first down marker right around the 10-yard line. He's going to be a couple yards short, Tyler, and I believe if Laquan Williams doesn't trip on that play, he might still be running all the way down for the touchdown. Had an open field right in front of him, just got tripped up, unfortunately, for him. He'll bring up third and short from the 10-yard line. There's been many times that IUP has been faced with a third and short opportunity, and most times they have succeeded, Zach. So they're going to look to continue that same sort of offense. 
as Mike Box has a receiver out wide to his left. Other than that, they're all stuck in tight. Williams will take it up the center, and he's going to get the first down, taking him down right around the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. First down for IUP. And again, Laquan Williams turning a third and short into a medium gain for IUP, giving him a new set of downs at the 16-yard line. That is DeAntoine Williams on the run. We've called his name a lot today. He has been the star for IUP so far. Mike Box only have two pass attempts. He's one for two, and we touched his efficiency isn't all that great. So running the ball, IUP might have some more success like they have so far. If it ain't broke, Zach, don't fix it. And that's IUP's strategy here on offense. His box is under center, two to his left. He's going to hand the ball off to Williams again, and Williams is going to be stopped for a very short gain, maybe of a yard or two. That time, Cal's defense able to sustain Williams for only a two-yard gain, not letting him break free like he has on the past couple runs. It is going to bring up second and eight with just over nine minutes left in the first half. So California really needs to stop IUP on this drive. They don't want to be down by more than one possession because they only might get one more turn at the ball here in the first half. Yeah, I'm expecting IUP to kind of work the clock here, use it to their advantage. They're up seven points. Don't let uh, California have any more opportunities on offense. Box, play action to the right. He rolls, and he's going to be almost intercepted by number five, Dewey McDonald. Coming up big there on the deflection. Would have even been bigger for an interception, but nonetheless, good play there on defense, and especially by Dewey McDonald. Well, there's the guy we've talked about so much on California's defense. Last week, he had a pick for a touchdown. This time, he might have had one right there, too, as well, because he had a couple blockers in front of him that might have guarded his way to the end zone, not able to come up with it. It's going to be third and eight for IUP now. We'll see if they can convert here. And if not, they'll probably have to punt the ball away since they're pinned so far back in their own zone. Mike Box looking to shake that one off as he's in shotgun formation. Twins to the left. Mike Box is going to take the snap. Look left. And he's going to pass it to the right. But that ball will not be completed. Brought down. And it's going to be a failed conversion on third down. And that is number 10 for IEP. That is Sean McVeigh, a junior wide receiver. Not able to come down with it. We'll see right here on the replay who the defender was. Looks like number 26. That's Brenko. Or excuse me, that's number 25, CJ Towns. Hard to read the numbers there. 26, 25 look alike on your television monitor. But CJ Towns with the big pass breakup and force fourth down. The punt is away, and it's going to be a short high one. And Johnson's going to get underneath, and he's going to take it himself. And he's going to be driving back about two yards as he's brought down right around the 45-yard line. Pretty good field position for Cody Schroeder. Now, Tyler, we know this is a PSAC matchup, especially the Western Division, the standings, California and Indiana, tied with Gannon and Clarion of all teams at the top, 1-0 in division. California and Indiana, along with Clarion, they're the only teams that have not suffered a loss yet. So one of these teams has to lose today, and that's really going to hurt their standings in the division. Yeah, this, this conference is up for grabs right now, Zach. And that's why this game is so important to both teams, especially since California has won eight PSAC West championships up till last year. But Fiore's going to take it up the middle. And he's going to be brought down for a gain of about four, maybe five yards. It's going to be a short three-yard gain. Actually, Tyler is going to make his way out to the 48-yard line. Now Fiore having some trouble getting up. IEP looks like they were kind of ambushed on top of him. Now Cody Schroeder going back to the no huddle offense on second down in the eight or a seven. Schroeder in the full house formation. He's going to check back. The IUP cheerleaders pumping up the crowd currently on the sidelines. Getting them in the uh, action right now. Making them the 12th man as they like to call it sometimes. Schroeder's going to take the snap. Hand it off to his right. That's Fiore but he's going to be brought down. And there's going to be a flag on the play. I'm interested to see what the call is on this one. It might be a holding call on the offensive line, but we'll have to see. It looks like Fiore celebrating a little bit. Might be a face mask call, depending on the tackle. We'll get the call from the official now. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty, Zach. That's going to give them the first down. Big play there, big uh, penalty for California that gives them better field position and helps their drive out a little bit. 
with only 7.33 left in the half. Every yard counts at this point. They need to put points up on the board, especially before halftime. You can't let number seven IUP get out to a big lead. That will put them at the 36 yard line, Tyler. First and 10 in IUP territory. Last time they were here, Schroeder threw his second interception of the day near the end zone. Hopefully they can get some better results as they go on this drive. Twins to the right for Schroeder. He's gonna take the snap, look right. He's gonna roll out to his right, and that pass is batted down by number 94, Shane Meisner, a name that we called earlier in this game, one to watch out for. There he is on the pass deflection. A good job right there, pass deflection. He was running with Schroeder, you see, and able to get his hands up. We see on the replay, not able to find it as the uh, camera was following the intended receiver, but Meisner able to get his hands up and block the pass. Pressure coming from IUP. Schroeder's gonna check back. He doesn't like how the defense was coming up with the pressure. And that's a good strategy by IUP's defense. Put a lot of pressure on Schroeder, make him work. He's only a sophomore and he's, this is his first year starting. He's gonna take the snap, look left, throw. And that is completed over the left side to number 15. That is of course Kawan Scott on the reception. Big first down conversion for Cal U. And we're gonna look at the replay. Scott, I believe his height helped on this one. Able to evade some IUP defenders and then get down the field for a few more yards. That will spot them at the 13 yard line. That was a completion of, I believe, 23 yards. So a good big gain. Puts them in the red zone for California. Hopefully it's not the same result as last drive as Schroeder takes a snap, hands it off to his running back up the middle. I believe that might be number 33, Nick Grissom, but it's hard to tell with this big pileup that might have been started. I believe it's actually going to be the fourth, Jeff Knox Jr. on the carry, and it is. So a short game, a short gain for California. And the IUP's defense really doing a lot of hitting on Jeff Knox. The fourth, we like to call him, able to sustain it. Now Fiore in the backfield for Schroeder. Schroeder almost gets a defensive line to jump off sides, but he's able to get back. IUP defenders in the backfield tr currently trying to get the crowd into it and they are indeed getting into the game right now becoming the 12th man. Schroeder takes a snap, tan it off over the middle to Fiore. Fiore breaking some tackles, going right, going left, but he's going to be brought down just short of the end zone. But I believe that's going to be a first down, Zach, as the yard markers are going to go down. It's going to be first and goal from the three yard line. A big run by Fiore, this time able to find a hole. Has some defenders on him, able to keep driving down the field though. First and goal from the three. California looking to strike here. Last time they were here though, Schroeder threw an interception. You have 5.50 left in the first half. Schroeder under center. Takes a snap, hands it off to Fiore, and he is stopped dead in his tracks for a loss of a couple yards. And it'll be spotted right around the six yard line. Big stop for the Crimson Hawks. And that was number 48, Dorian Lane. He's a junior middle linebacker. We'll watch him here, able to stop Fiore immediately for no gain. He actually lost a couple yards, I believe, and is going to be from about the six yard line, so drives California back some more. Schroeder under center, shotgun formation, two to his left. Schroeder's gonna check back. The crowd really getting into it right now. That home field advantage playing a big part of IUP success so far in the first half. Schroeder takes a snap, looks left, Pump fake throws over the back of the end zone, but way too high for Desmond Green to get up and catch that one. Desmond Green is a tall tight end. He is six foot five, matches the height of the tallest receiver for California. That one's just too far over his head. IUP defender was right there with Green. So now California is faced with a very daunting third and goal. You figure if they don't get it here, they might settle for the field goal, at least get some points on the board. But if they get close to about the one yard line, we'll have to see what they do. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to just go for the points when it's available for you, Zach, but you want to strike quick, and you want to hurry up and try to match IUP before they get out to a big lead. But Schroeder's going to take the snap over the center. He passes, and it is a caught, and it is inconclusive. And it's going to be an interception. Again, number 21, Terrell Holloway on the interception in the end zone. That's his third pick of the day. That's Cody Schroeder's third interception of the day. Unbelievable, Holloway has Schroeder's number right now. Yeah, Holloway is really trying to become best friends with Cody Schroeder, I guess you could say. Cody Schroeder not liking that so much though. Keeps throwing him the ball instead of his receivers. 
Cal's defense is gonna have to step up again with 4.54 left in the first half. Cal U has twice gone to the red zone and thrown two interceptions. They're really gonna have to find a big momentum swing here on defense, maybe an interception, a fumble recovery, a sack, give them some momentum going towards halftime. Absolutely, a big defensive stop here for California would be great for them. Fox takes a snap, there should be a flag on the play. Looks like it might have been a false start on the offense or it could be defensive encroachment. We'll see what the referees decide. It's gonna be a false start on the offense, so that's gonna push IUP back a few yards and that's gonna help uh, Cal U in their goal of stopping IUP before halftime is upon us. And that will make it first and 15 from the 15 yard line. We still see the officials huddling up though, so we might get a reversal on the call, I'm not sure. Here's another call. And it changes to offsides, Tyler. That is twice this game that that has happened. So IEP will get a first and five instead of first and 15. So that helps them out. And Cal's defense can't give themselves any more free yards for IEP. The penalties are gonna hurt if they keep giving them free yards and downs. Absolutely, I actually just saw, not to totally switch it up on you, Zach, but I saw President Geraldine Jones walking along the fence line there. So it's nice to see the Cal U acting, uh, it, uh, acting president come around and check out their Vulcans in action as IUP takes it up the middle for a short gain. Again, that's Williams on the carry. He's been the only one who has rushed the ball for IUP this game. It looks like it was a gain of about half a yard, so we'll bring up second and five, we'll call it. So Cal's defense able to sustain that one and not give them another first down. But Williams has really worked well in the short yard and down opportunities. I'm anxious to see, the last time the IUP got the third and long, if they do that again, they threw the ball. They might go back to Williams to run it though because he's had some big gains for them on the ground. Absolutely, he's had a lot of opportunities to break a long run too, but California preventing that from happening. As it is the eye formation for the Crimson Hawks. And he hands it off to Williams to the right side. Actually, I don't think that was Williams this time. I believe that's a new running back. Number 42 for IUP. Actually, number seven. That's going to be Eric Finkla for the IUP Crimson Hawks. And he is the first person besides uh, Antoine Williams to have a rush for the IUP Crimson Hawks. Finkla, a redshirt senior, as well as DeAntoine Williams. So both of them back here, a senior presence for IUP good rushing game so far for the Crimson Hawks with 3.34 left in the first half. IEP looking to put some more points on the board themselves before this half is over. Box takes a handoff, he's gonna hand it off to the left and again is going to be taken up the left side of shot, stop short of the first down, Eric Finklia on the carry. And it looks like IEP will send out their punt team so IEP not going to try and go for it on fourth down Avoid the turnover on downs, and Trey Johnson will come back to receive yet another punt. I believe this is the third in the game. The punter for the Crimson Hawks is Matt Spiegel, a sophomore punter. And the punt, the snap is off, and the punt is now away. A short high kick again. Trey Johnson going to get underneath it, try to take it himself, but he's going to be brought down right where he catches it, around the 38-yard line. But let's go ahead and look at some PSAC headlines. Clarion 3-0 for the first time since 1996. Lock Haven has the two wins for the first time since 2006. And Warner is a true freshman leading the PSAC in passing. Uh, he is for Kutztown University. We had the honor of seeing him play at California earlier in this year. Not so successful though on offense as California defense stepped up big and shut him down offensively and defensively as well. And now we have a new quarterback in the game, Tyler. That's James Harris, a redshirt sophomore from Woodstock, Georgia, around where I live. And now the handoff goes to Jeff Knox for a gain of about one yard. But Harris is in now, so Schroeder is being benched after throwing three interceptions against the Crimson Hawks defense. Uh, 
I have to do, I have to say that I agree with this call, Zach. I mean, three interceptions from a first year starter is not what you want to see in such a big game, too. He is a transfer from Wake Forest University where he played baseball, decided that baseball wasn't his sport. He was going to try out football. He was a five star athlete in high school, so he decided that he wanted to come to California. He wanted to play some football, but nonetheless, he has a heck of an arm, Zach. We've seen him do well in games past, and he does really well with the practice squad as well, so. Uh, definitely a good improvement, but first and uh, second down for the Vulcans. Throws to the right side. It'll be brought down by Mike Williams for a first down. And Harrison Company now looks to drive this team downfield for the first points of the game. And speaking of Harris, he is from the area where I live in Marietta, Georgia, about maybe 30 minutes away from where I live at Etowah High School. He has a lot of records for Etowah High School, so you know he's a good prospect to bring in here to replace Schroeder. Might lead your team down for a, a tying score. Harris takes a snap, hands it off to his right side. That's going to be Jeff Knox Jr. on the carry, but he'll be brought down forward. Progress should bring him down around the 46, maybe the 45-yard line. So another short gain to bring up second down. And something that I might expect out of Harris, you might see a play-action pass. That's really helped Cal's offense so far in the first three games of the year. I'd like to see if they implement the play-action Make the run and find a receiver open like Kawan Scott, who's tall. You can throw it down there and make him jump for it. Harris back to throw. Has some time, but he's pressured actually, and he's going to try to throw it away. And it looks like the referee might be throwing the flag for the intentional grounding. And that's what it's going to be. It's going to be, actually, I'm, I apologize. It's going to be a hands to the face penalty. That's exactly what it's going to be. Hands to the face for California. So that's going to push him back now. A big, big penalty for California's offense, something that they didn't want to see. But now they're faced with a long, long second down play here, uh, Zach. And it's going to be second and, let's see, they started at the 50, now they're at the 39. So it's going to be second and 21, I believe, Tyler, from the 39-yard line. So a big daunting task to complete on these on these plays to continue the drive full house formation for Harris takes a snap he's looking to pass he's gonna throw it over to the left sideline he has the receiver open but Kawan Scott cannot hold on to it tough break for Scott and that would have surely been a touchdown I believe if he would have had his hands on it absolutely Tyler and we touched on this problem before Kawan Scott and a couple of other Cal receivers not able to hold on to the ball that's something that really plagued them Right into his bread basket, not able to hold on. It drops through. So it'll be third and I believe 21 with just over a minute left in the first half for California. A long third down play here, uh, Zach. And they really got to make something happen before halftime is over. Obviously, you're only down seven, so the game's not quite over yet at all. It's actually, in my opinion, may have just begun because second half is what really has made this Cold Bowl exciting and made it what it really is. So Harris is going to try to do something on offense here. Now he's back, he's gonna to look to throw, he passes over the left side and it's going to be deflected off of number 21 again, Terrell Holloway. That would have been his fourth interception of the day, just not able to bring the ball down. And California surely has to wonder, why is he everywhere on the field? It seems where they throw the ball. You look in the replay, almost comes down with his fourth interception, that time from Harris instead of Schroeder, but Surrett now out to punt with 58.8 seconds left in the first half. IUP will get the ball second half, so Cal's defense is gonna have to step up and keep them off the board here too. Surrett punts the ball away, it's a high one. And it's going to bounce right around the 20 yard line, but bounce backwards. And it'll be touched right around the four yard line. IUP gonna have a long drive ahead of them with 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Andrew Surrett though, really just punting the ball really efficiently not only this game Zach but all season as well has pinned them back has pinned opponents back behind a 20 yard line multiple times I would say if I had to guess right now this is his fifth time doing so this season second time this game uh, very efficient coffin corner kind of punter you might see him go pro if I mean if a lot of scouts like what he has to offer with his leg and he's only a sophomore Tyler so he has room to improve still hard to believe because he is such a good punter for the Vulcans, able to switch field position, pin a team deep like IUP, like he did this time. And the one before, 79 yards all the way to the one yard line. A great punt 
uh, from Surratt all season, and it helps California's defense to try and force some turnovers as well. Box is going to take snap, hand it off to Williams up to the left side, and he's going to be met by the California defense for a short gain, maybe of about a yard. And you see right there, after the play is over, I believe that's number 89, Jalen Fields getting into it with Williams. California's going to go ahead and take a timeout to calm their players down a little bit, uh, talk over what their defensive strategy is going to be. 41 seconds left. But while we have a chance, why don't we go ahead and look at some of the other games going on in the PSAC, Zach? Some of the top games in the PSAC schedule, Seton Hill will go to Edinburgh, Shippensburg at Millersville, East Stroudsburg at Cheney, Gannon at Clarion. That matchup is going to be a key this week. Lockhaven at Bloomsburg, Kutztown at Westchester, and then Mercyhurst at Slippery Rock. Mercyhurst and Slippery Rock is always a big matchup because those are two of the top teams, along with IEP and California, in the West this year. But Clarion and Gannon, both coming off wins last week. Clarion defeating Mercyhurst, Gannon defeating Slippery Rock. That could be a big game. Clarion might move to 4-0 today if they get another win. Absolutely, but they can go the other way for Gannon, too. They could be undefeated in the PSAC with a 2-0 record, but still only have one loss uh, overall. But nonetheless, that's a lot of big games that are going on in the PSAC this week. A lot of them that will help tell how the PSAC West is going to actually play out. So it'll be interesting to see how these teams uh, really come around as Williams will take the ball up the, right, up the left side rather for a short gain. And I believe California is going to take another timeout. As that will be their second of the half. It leaves them with one with 37.3 seconds left. I'm sure if California can stop IEP here, they're going to call another timeout and try and see if they can get something going on the punt return. Or maybe throw a Hail Mary in the end zone and try and have one of your tall receivers come down with it. Not a bad strategy at all. It is going to be third down, so you're going to use the other timeout after this play as long as it doesn't convert for the first try to get the punt like you said, uh, maybe make something happen on special teams. We've seen it happen this year. Uh, Trey Johnson in his uh, four-year career here at Cal U has had a lot of punt returns for touchdowns, has had a couple kick returns for touchdowns as well. So um, he's definitely capable of making something happen on special teams. And that's something that Cal U really surprised themselves on as well, is how good their special teams has been in the past couple years. And they kind of rely on that sometimes to help them out in some of these bigger games. Now Tyler faced with a third and about three yards. IUP, if they convert, might be the last play of the first half, depending on their strategy. They do have three timeouts left, so we'll have to see as action unfolds. Box under center. He's going to hand it off to the left side, and he's going to be brought down short of the first down marker. That'll bring up fourth down. I would imagine Cal using to call their final timeout, as they do. But Zach, a pretty impressive hit there from an IUP player, from the Cal U player. That is number 92, that's Anthony McPo or excuse me, number 92, that's Blake Bell, a freshman nose tackle, uh, such as Anthony McPoyle. So two freshman nose tackles there, that's gonna really help your defense later on when you lose some of your key graduates like Noah Taylor, Paul Everson, and BJ Stevens, having two freshmen there that can play already, gonna help you later on. But Tyler, the one thing I wanna touch on is, with 32.4 seconds left, they don't score here, Cal's still only down by seven. They came back after scoring no points against Hillsdale first half to win that game. So they have to imagine that they're not out of it yet. Only down by one possession, you're out of nothing if you're only down by seven points. They can easily tie this game at any point. Yeah, absolutely. This coal bowl brought to you by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance is definitely not over yet. Only one half down, one half still to go. As the punt is up, it's short and it's away. It'll be landing around the 45-yard line and roll back to right around the 42-yard line. And that's where I believe James Harris will come back out and take over shop with about 18 seconds left. So maybe a play or two uh, left underneath this California offense. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this first half plays out, Zach. And something smart that I saw IUP do, they didn't touch the ball immediately. That would have given Cal more time on the clock. They let the clock run down a little bit before the officials stopped it themselves, give California 18 seconds even on the clock. A very smart play by IUP special teams to allow them to not 
give California any more time to get, get a big opportunity to score before the end of the half. Absolutely, James Harris now back out for the Vulcans as we expected. Full house package, two receivers to his right. Abercrombie calling out the play for the offensive line. And we see a prevent defense for IUP, so they're not trying to let any big plays pass them. Nick Grissom's gonna take it up the middle for a short gain, and that should do it for the first half of the 2013 Coal Bowl presented to you by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance as clock kicks down from three to two to one, and that'll be it for the first half here at IUP's beautiful stadium, George Miller Stadium, that is. IUP currently leads California seven to nothing. When we come back, the second half will begin here at George Miller Stadium. Stay tuned. Do you want the latest scoop on California Vulcans football? Watch each week for highlights and analysis of last week's game, a preview of next week's game, and a look around the PSAC. Get pumped. Vulcan Football 2013, Tuesday through Fridays on CUTV. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus and cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CU TV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. CU TV is your home for local high school football action. Sundays at 8.30, Thursdays at 5.30, only on CUTV. There is a university built on an uncommon dedication to the whole student, where core values of integrity, civility, and responsibility are not just taught, but integrated into academic experience. Creating a learning environment for personal life as well as professional life. California University of Pennsylvania. And, and hello everybody and welcome back to the Cool Bowl here at George P. Miller Stadium in Indiana, Pennsylvania. The 2013 Cold Bowl featuring the Vulcans of California University of Pennsylvania and the Crimson Hawks of IUP is presented by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance. We'd also like to thank the following participating sponsors. Alpha National Resources, Caterpillar, Console Energy, the United Mine Workers of America, and of course, the Washington County Tourism Agency. Thank you for your support of the Cool Bowl. And Zach, it has been quite an impressive game so far. Score only being seven to nothing right now. IEP leading this one as they come down from their respective locker rooms again. But let's go ahead and take a look at the halftime stats. Yeah, the stats are really telling, but they might be a little deceiving. Cal has more total yards than IUP, but the big thing is Cal, three interceptions all from Cody Schroeder. He was benched and replaced with James Harris, the sophomore from Woodstock, Georgia. Leading in time of possession, the penalties are about even, and 85 rushing yards against 26 passing yards for IUP. So Cal really stopping Mike Box pretty well so far in the game. And now we're going to look at some of the replays. Uh, a lot of them are from Terrell Holloway, who came away with some of the key interceptions. The first, though, is a touchdown for D'Antoine Williams of IUP. Absolutely, the UConn prospect who came to IUP to play his football career, uh, at least for the college level he did. But here we go, we take a look at some more of the highlights here. 
And there is that big catch from Trey Johnson over the middle, getting flipped up over the defensive backs. A pretty impressive athletic play there. But here is where things start going wrong for Cody Schroeder and company. There is the interception again from number 21, Terrell Holloway from out of Penn Hills, uh, closer to around the Pittsburgh area, a little bit up north of there. But nonetheless, Schroeder again gets stricken by the interception bug as Roberson, as he, not Roberson rather, um, Holloway comes up again with another interception, this time in the end zone. He had another one in the game too. Uh, so three interceptions from Schroeder, but three of them all from Terrell Holloway. Uh, quite an impressive player for the defense so far. A big player overall in this game. If I had to say IUP wins this game, I would say you give Holloway the MVP. And now Tyler, you, we already know how big this game is. We're going to clarify it for you again. Look at the PSAC West standings. California, Indiana, Gannon, and Clarion all at the top with 1-0 records. But one of these teams has to come away with a loss today. Dropped them to 1-1 one one, down in the pack. And then Clarion and Gannon are playing today too. So two of those teams are only going to be undefeated. Everybody else is going to have at least one loss in the pack in the PSAC West. It's a very competitive division this year. Unlike last year where there was really some top teams, this year Clarion's up there, Gannon's up there, and some natural uh, uh, occurring contenders, Slippery Rock, Mercyhurst, falling down to the bottom. Absolutely. Every team in the PSAC West playing at least another member of the PSAC West this week as uh, Edinburgh plays Seton Hill as well. So... A lot of changes are going to come here within the next couple of weeks coming up. A lot of divisional play will be coming. But there is the man of the hour, Terrell Holloway for IUP. A big, big high school standout. And he comes to IUP and brings his talents here. And I bet you IUP and the scouts are very happy with his progress so far. He is a senior after all. So that kind of helps him uh, maybe look at some draft choices in the NFL in, upcoming, uh, in the upcoming year. Absolutely, Ty. You talk about progress. I've honestly not heard the name before. I don't really follow the IEP Crimson Hawks roster a lot. The only players I really knew about were Mike Fox, who was the quarterback. But Terrell Holloway has really stolen the show today. Three interceptions as a senior. In the most important game of the year, you could debate against your arch rival here in the Cole Bowl 5. All the marbles going towards trying to lock up the Western Division. Absolutely, and this is a big way for one of these teams to do so as the California Falcons are going to kick off the IUP to start this second half. And uh, it's going to be big for California special teams to not only make the stop here to begin with, but for their defense to step up as well. Um, so if I'm a fantasy owner of a D2 pool right now, I would say I'm crossing my fingers at home hoping that California can stay strong because they don't want them to let up any more points and I'm sure California themselves don't want to let up any more points either as kickoff is away Cody Nuzo kicking a long one and that's going to go way in the back of the end zone for the touchback so the Crimson Hawks are going to come out on offense at the 20 yard line and a good starting kick right there for Cody Nuzo not used to seeing him kicking him into the end zone a lot the wind is blowing that way a little bit I'm sure that helped but nonetheless Cody Nuzo with a great strong kick, giving IEP only the minimum there that they can get at least. It would have been nice to have driven them back farther, but at least knowing they can only start at the 25 is good for Cal's defense. They will start at the 25 yard line. That's where it is in college rather than in the pros where it's at the 20. He's gonna hand it off to Williams up the right side. Williams is gonna take it himself and he's gonna break through and a nice tackle there from Dewey McDonald just to take out the shoestrings trip him up right around midfield big rushing gain big first down for Williams in the Crimson Hawks and a great start for the Crimson Hawks on this drive getting Williams some more touches I'm sure that will put IUP over 100 total rushing yards in the game they had 85 at halftime really starting to gauge how well Cal can defend the run and so far not so good not so good as the I formation is back. Box is going to hand it off again to Williams. Williams about the same exact play. He's going to keep pushing forward, getting what he can. After a couple of second and third efforts, he's going to find his way up to right around the 42-yard line. That'll be a gain of about eight yards. And another big gain. So 
two large gains. Uh, this one not as long as the first one, of course. But nonetheless, both of those come on the right side of Cal's defense. They are going to need to shore that up if they want to stop Williams from keep on running at them. Receiver in motion. He's going to hand it off to his running back, though. Fake the handoff to his receiver. But a crushing hit from California's defense will push them back a little bit further for a loss of about two or maybe three yards. And that time, uh, Williams goes to the left and he gets stopped for a loss. So Cal, you really able to stop the run on the left side, as you see in your replay there. They just need to get the right side a little bit short up and they might have a chance to come back in this one. It's still only a one possession game, Tyler. So anything is possible off of one key play. Absolutely, BJ Stevens, a big member of that defense for California. Uh, he's the reason, a big reason why that uh, right side for of the defense uh, is really tough to uh, run on. So Williams finally getting a taste of that, but Box is going to jump back, throw to his right side. That's going to be complete for the first down. He's going to be driven out of bounds right around the 35-yard line. Receiver on that play, Terrell Barnes for IUP. And we've not called any receivers for IUP. Their names a lot today. Uh, during halftime stats, Mike Box was only one for, I think, maybe four. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, Tyler, getting a first completion here. We'll have to see if Cal U can sustain their defense and continue the bend, don't break trend. Yeah, bend, don't break working pretty well so far, only allowing one touchdown in the first half. The box is under center. He's going to fake the handoff throw over the middle, and it is caught again by Barnes, and he sheds the tackles. Touchdown, IUP. And a great run after the catch by Barnes there, breaking the tackle of number nine for California. That is, uh, I believe that is Corey Ford for California, breaking the tackle there, running out away from Dewey McDonald. You see there on the replay, and finding Pater in the end zone to make this a 13-0 game. Corey Ford, the transfer from Towson, a D1AA school, not able to get the tackle as he allows Barnes to run up the middle into the end zone and put another six points up on the board. Barring the extra point, which is up and which looks like it is good. That'll make it 14 to nothing. Crimson Hawks over the Vulcans. Stay tuned for the rest of the third half, third quarter and even the fourth quarter here on CUTV. Need to know what's happening in your area? CUTV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CUTV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. Welcome back to the IUP Crimson Hawks field here, Harmon uh, well, Stadium. I forget what stadium it actually is off the top of my head, Zach. I can't remember. George P. Miller, of course. Nonetheless, uh, we're getting back into some action here as the kickoff is away. Looks like Trey Johnson is going to receive it in the end zone, take it up the right side. That's actually going to be number seven, Roberson. He takes it up to right around the 37-yard line, and that's where James Harris is going to come back out and lead this California offense back on the field. And now we look at the touchdown for IUP. That is Terrell Barnes breaking away from the tackle from Corey Ford and finding pay dirt in the end zone to extend this to a two-possession lead. And like you said, Tyler, James Harris is back in there. Cody Schroeder still benched after throwing three interceptions all the Terrell Holloway. We'll have to see what Harris can do for the Cal Vulcans offense. The kicker on that play for IUP, a little shaken up on the sidelines. But nonetheless, Schroeder's going to hand the ball off to Fiore up the left side. A pretty ball, crushing ball, hit, ball, and that'll bring it down to the, around the 40-yard line. And a great run there by Fiore, gaining about four yards on the first down play. So second and six for the Vulcans. We'll see if Harris decides to throw an intermediate pass route here. 
We will see as he is under center. Shotgun formation. Twins to the right. He takes a snap. Hands the ball off to Fiore. And Fiore won't get many yards at all. Actually, I think he'll be pushed back a little bit on that one for no gain. And again there, Fiore, the first down, able to find some running room. This time, IUP shores it up. I think Cal U is going to have to start mixing up their different sets there. Instead of going run, run, pass, they might have to go some pass, runs, pass, mix everything up on their offense to try and get IUP on their heels. Harris checks. Scans the defense right now. And he's going to take the snap. Looks like there might have been a jump on defense. Flag thrown. Harris knows it's a free play. Throws it, and the receiver not able to catch it. Priori, the intended receiver on that one. But I'm sure that that's going to help Cal U as far as the penalty goes. I believe that was going to be a defensive jump. So it might have been encroachment or offsides on the defense. So it should have been a free play. Unfortunately, not able to convert for California. So they're going to get some extra room. They're going to get some extra room to work with here on third down. And I believe that's number 91, Michael Laro, a redshirt senior defensive tackle for IUP, who jumped off sides. So it'll be third and five. Actually, that is wrong, Tyrod. It's third and one. The board is not updated yet. Third and very short for the Vulcans. Let's see if they can convert. Harris checking with his offensive coordinator, seeing what it, he wants them to do. The run game, not that impressive, has been stopped short of the force, first down before and has been stopped short of any yards. So we'll see what they decide to do here. Fakes hand off the Fiore. Rolls to the right, tries to get there, but I don't think he did, Zach. It's going to be close. We'll see what the referees decide. Looks like based on the spot, it'll be very close to a first down. They might have to give a measurement here. They are calling it fourth down. The way it looks, California might go for it here. Trying to find a spark in the offense. But no, they're going to punt the ball away. Surrett will come out. Fourth and inches, they're not going to go for it. We might have to look for the fake, though. I'm a little surprised to not see a uh, play gone for here. They actually did huddle on the field, so we might expect a fake punt here. It's hard to say what's going to happen. I don't think Cal U should take the risk, though, right now. A little too early in the game to be taking big risks like that. Surrett's going to punt the ball away. It's long. It's going to be brought up by the IUP the receiver. He's going to break a few tackles. Flag thrown on the play. Still trying to go. He's brought down right around the 35-yard line. We'll see what the flag is, though. The referees are going to talk it over and decide what they have saw, or not have seen, rather, um, on the field. I believe this might be a legal block in the back, Tyler, based on where the flag was thrown from, or maybe even possibly a holding against IUP. So we'll have to see, it. does this drive the ball back or no? <laughs> it's going to be an illegal block in the back on the receiving team. That's a 10 yard penalty for IUP. So they're gonna push the ball back to about the 25 yard line and that's where Box and company was gonna come out for IUP and take a set up shot. It's actually going to be set up around the 15 yard line is where the referees are going to go ahead and spot IUP it. So IUP has a long drive ahead of them if they want to put up more points on the board. And Cal's defense really has to shore up, maybe get a key turnover here. They're already in IUP zone. They might get a turnover for a touchdown. Give them some momentum swing there. Get them back in this game. I think exactly what they need. Box takes a snap. Hands it off to Williams. Williams up the right side. Sheds a couple defenders. And on a second effort, gets his way up to about a gain of five yards right around the 20-yard line. Another good run for Williams off his right side. Able to find a lot of running room there. And we have a player for Cal that's a little gimpy. That's number 25, C.J. Towns. So he's walking off. It looks like it might be a hamstring or an ankle injury. We'll have to see if he'll come out or not. Looks like he's telling his defense that he's fine and that he doesn't want to come out. Showing that he wants to stay tough and wants to stay strong for his team. But there is a player down for IEP. That's Williams. But we're going to go ahead and look at the AFCA top 25. And you will see, of course, IUP right around number seven right now. And that's why this game is so important for them. They want to keep their rank and even find themselves possibly in an NCAA uh, division championship. 
So nonetheless, California not on that list. They're actually number 26. They are one vote out, actually 10 votes out of being in the top 25. But you see some PSAC representatives in that one as well. You got Bloomsburg, Shepard, uh, not in the PSAC, but at least in the region. Um, you have Winston-Salem State. And of course, you see Westchester there climbing their ranks slowly but surely, right around number 19. So nonetheless, we got to watch out for Shepard. Shepard's is a very tough team. Uh, they can definitely climb their ranks, climb the ranks and get themselves up there as well. So we have some regional representatives in there. It's always nice to see. And especially the one we're looking at now, we're going to look ahead to Westchester, who California plays next week. They have to go on the road out towards the Philadelphia area. As we see, Williams is now up off the field, walking off the field under his own power. As we're going to look at Cal's schedule now, they started 3-0 against Hillsdale, um, Kutztown, and Edinburgh. Of course, here now at Indiana. Then they have to go to Westchester. And a couple home games left against Clarion, Gannon, and Mercyhurst, Slipper Rock, Seton Hill, and Millersville or the PSAC Championship as the road foes still left on schedule. Absolutely. So a long season ahead for California. But they look to not look past IUP right now. They're looking to put some points on the board first and try to get a victory here. As the handoff is taken up the middle, Hand and he'll be stopped oh. short of the first down. That handoff taken by number seven, Eric Finklia, as Williams still a little injured. Uh, on the sidelines, and CJ Towns is actually going to come back off the field. It looks like he has his shoe in his hand, so he's going to come off, and somebody else will sub in for him. That is number 10 for California, subbing oh, in. That is Jordan two. Bowman. He is subbing in for CJ Towns on the play. Williams is still out for IUP. I do not see him on the sidelines currently, though, Tyler, so we'll have to see if he comes back in the game at all. I expect him to come back. It didn't seem like his injury was very uh, game ending at all. It might have been just a cramp. But the handoff is taken by Box. Finkley will take it up the middle and a big hit delivered from the California defense. That is number 10, Jordan Bowman on the hit. He is taken out though and CJ Towns is back in. So he looks like he's healed from his prior injury. IUP nonetheless gets another first down with 844 left in the third quarter. Williams still not back in this series yet. They're going to let Finklia take it himself for a little bit. He, we saw him uh, earlier in the game take some handoffs. Did pretty well with it. Kind of had the same effect as Williams had, so they're going to leave him in for now and pad his stats a little bit. Box hands it off to Finklia. Finklia bounces it out to the right side, but the sea of white oh, jerseys here, will stop here. him before he gets too, too far. Short gain for the Crimson Hawks. And it's actually no gain, Tyler. We had look like a penalty flag on the play. We'll have to see. On the play. Aaron Carey. Or excuse me, no penalty, Tyler. It looked like there was going to be a penalty call on the play. A little bit of confusion there from the referees. But nonetheless, second and 10 from the 30-yard line with just a little over eight minutes left. Box still under center for the Crimson Hawks. I formation, twins to the left. Box takes a snap, rolls out to his left, finds a receiver open on the sidelines. He's going to take it upfield himself and go and out of bounds. But he gets the first down before he does so. And that is Terrell Barnes again who's scoring the touchdown. Robin One thing I like to notice is that Mike Box is starting to pass the ball more, keeping Cal U's defense off balance. They have been expecting run the entire time. Now Box is able to roll out and get some passes down the field, which is really confusing. The Cal U defense, they have to find a turnover or a stop here and try and get themselves back in this game. Absolutely, but I think the problem more lies on their offense right now. You bring in your backup quarterback to replace a Cody Schroeder who has thrown three interceptions. they got to get something rolling on offense just as much as they need this defensive stop. Box hands it off up the middle to Finklia. And he's going to be brought down in the backfield for a Perry, loss of about two yards. That was number 27 on the tackle, Jeff Parrish for California. So a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second and 12 for IUP now after the short loss. And Finkley will come out and Williams is back in for IUP. So he must be recovered from his uh, prior injury. Did not look that serious like you said, Tyler. We'll see if he runs the same like he did. I'm sure he will, Zach. It kind of... Talent just doesn't end from one cramp. I, I think that's exactly what it was. Uh, I mean, it is a little hot out there today. Uh, so, I mean, cramps will happen. Just got to load up on the potassium, and he'll be fine. 
Fox takes a snap, rolls to his right. There's a defender behind him, but not able to get there in time. Gets the pass off, and it is complete to Terrell Barnes again. And that'll help IUP have some more room here on third down. And the impressive thing there is Mike Box able to roll out away from the pressure. He had a couple defenders on him. Now he looks like he's actually grasping his knee a little bit, Tyler. I can see that from here as he's over on the sideline towards the coaches. But nonetheless, Mike Box able to roll away from pressure and find an open receiver downfield to make it another third and short for IEP where they've had a lot of success on the field today. Third down and two to go. Box under center, full back and half back behind him. Box takes a snack, fakes the handoff, looks right, throws, finds a tight end open, and he is able to bring it in. A great one-handed catch for number 41, Tyler Dummermuth. A great reception there by the tight end. An absolutely fantastic play from the tight end for IUP. A one-handed grab, able to get full possession. Get, it looks like he actually got both feet in bounds. You only need one in college. He got both in there to assure the referees that he did come out with the catch. And now IUP is in Cal territory. Another time, this is their second time in the half, another second drive. IEP sticking with the same formation, all drive now for the most part. Hands it off to Williams at the left side, and he is brought down, almost brought down, the, but on a second effort, spins off of the first tackle, gains about three yards on the play. Great job by Williams to evade any tackles early on that run. And that was Anthony McPoint on number 99 on the early wrap-up, just not able to bring him down. And that's what Williams has really been able to generate his yards from, is breaking away from tackles in the backfield, find some holes and run for about gains of four or five yards. And that's what's given him success today. Williams is 5'7", 195 pounds, so a pretty decent weight to him, but a pretty small running back nonetheless. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get your hands on such a quick guy like Williams. Single back Williams is. Fox takes his hand off, actually takes a snap, hands it off to Williams. And Williams will be brought down for progress and give him about two yards. And now it looks like Dewey McDonald getting a little frustrated, shoving Williams back towards the backfield. No penalty flag comes in. You'll see it at the end of the play on your replay. But Cal's defense getting frustrated that they are running all over them. Dewey McDonald, I'm sure one of the senior captains here, although he's a first year player transfer from Fairmont State, wants to get his defense rolling and try and give the offense a little bit more of an opportunity to stay in this game. Absolutely. It's really tough for this California defense right now. It's been a long, punishing drive. I bet you they're pretty tired. They want to go on the sidelines. 3.53 left in the third quarter. False start on the offense as number 78 for IUP jumped on that one. 78 is George Vicioso. So that's going to drive them back about five yards, Zach. Sorry right there, Tyler. That is going to drive IUP back to about a third and 10 or a little bit longer it is going to be third and 10. So we'll have to see, does IUP go with the run set at the field goal or do they go with the pass that Box has had a lot of success with in the second half and try and get another first down? Yeah, that win is still not in the favor of the kicker on the right side of the field right now. So I'm not sure if they're gonna wanna go for the field goal. They might just try to hurry up and put six more points up on the board here, but they might try to play a safe game as well. We'll see what they come up with though here on third down and 10. Box takes a snap, looks to up the center, throws over the middle, and it is picked off by Dewey McDonald, takes it up the right side, open room to work with, only the quarterback to beat. A big block from, from the California defender, and that is a touchdown. California gets his first six points of the game from a Dewey McDonald no, interception. And I'm sorry right there, Tyler, there are no flags on the field, so that will stand. That's the big momentum swing I was talking about. Dewey McDonald for the second straight week. Third straight week overall, California has scored on an interception. That's the big swing they needed. Dewey McDonald, your senior leader, I said he was getting frustrated. He showed it there, went, I think about, um, I believe that was about maybe, uh, I have to do my math, 71 Seven yards. yards on a uh, interception return. I had to do my quick mental math there. 71 yards for the interception return for California. Great job by Dewey McDonald stepping up big, being that big defensive leader after Ron Tess Miles graduated and went to the NFL. Not enough people on the field for IEP right now, just trying to get a placement together. News that back to kick the extra point, it's up and it's good. 
So Cody Nuzo adds another point to that scoreboard. It's going to be 14 to 7 here with 3:12 left in the third quarter. Stay tuned for the rest of the action here from IUP. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And welcome back to Miller Stadium here in Indiana, Pennsylvania, where California scores at first points of the game with 312 left in the third quarter. So better late than never, Zach, as they finally get on the scoreboard. And a big interception return by Dewey McDonald. Score stands 14-7 on your first Niagara scoreboard. Ladies and gentlemen, Cody Nuzo about to perform the kickoff after the interception. Hopefully California can keep momentum though and not let IUP run all over them again. It'll be interesting to see how they do it, but the kick is away. It is caught around the two yard line. Looks like Williams is back there running it, finds some open holes, but he'll be brought down right around the 28 yard line. But here's that touchdown again, Zach, and it's a beautiful one. Mike Box stepping back to throw. He is hit as he throws. Dewey McDonald steps right in front of the intended receiver and runs it all the way back, 71 yards, plus wherever he was on the field. I did not get to see where that was. Down the sideline, Box, the only player he had to beat. And a good job by the blocker, that's Brian Justice, I believe, not to shove over Box, keep away any penalty, possible penalty flags. California's defense trying to keep the momentum up, though, trying to get California's off. I think this is going to help the defense of California big time and put some fire back into their uh, into their passion, whatever it is. Put them fire back in them uh, and try to get some something rolling here on defense as that first play for IUP of the drive goes for about a six-yard gain, a run up the middle for DeAntoine Williams. DeAntoine Williams again purging through the defense, and he's still limping a little bit, though. He will come out of the game now and be replaced by number 26 for IUP. That is Israel Green. So Williams is out of the game again. We'll have to monitor his further injury updates, if any, that we can possibly get. California's side of the field getting pretty amped up right now, but Green takes it up this middle and he'll be brought down right around the 41 yard line, but that'll be enough for a first down for Israel Green. This is exactly the way IUP wanted to come back out on offense. They wanted to show that that interception won't hurt them. Running the ball, they're still very successful. They're doing a great job of trying to keep California back in their own zone, which is something IUP has done on every drive they've had so far in the second half with just over two minutes left in the third quarter. Mike Box pretty confident on offense right now, especially the running backs. New running back checking in again. That's Eric Finklia. We've seen him a few times this game so far. Box takes a snap, hands it off to Finklia. Finklia takes up the left side. A lot of room to run with right now. And he's going to get the first down and about two yards more. But there is a flag on the field, I believe. No, no flag on the field. I apologize. That's going to be a straight-up first down for IUP again. So IUP continuing to run outside and find some success. As we see a couple subs come in, I know Darnell Harding and number 92, Blake Bell going out. Anthony McPoyle coming in. I believe that's Jalen Fields also coming in, trying to get some fresh bodies out there to try and stop the run game for IUP. Jalen Fields, a name that we haven't called very many times yet this year, uh, but he's out on the offense. He's looking to make a big impact as the IUP offense takes under center again. Box takes the handoff, hands it off to his back. Up the middle he goes, and he'll be brought down for a gain of about four, maybe five yards. So again, Cal not able to stop any rusher for IUP. The offensive line is just blocking so well today for IUP. 
It looked like it might have been an issue beforehand in the game. They've gone through a couple different rotations of their offensive line. I know that. Now it looks like we have an equipment malfunction on Jalen Fields on the field that is being taken care of. But IUP's defense, or excuse me, Cal's defensive line, not able to um, shed any blocks and get the runners down in the backfield like they are so prone to doing in the first three games. T. Antoine Williams back under running halfback position. Sheds a couple tackles and he'll get the first down. Small plays coming from IUP. A couple of small runs here and there, but usually it only takes them two, maybe three downs to do it. They're killing the clock. They're using it to their advantage right now. And right now, Cal's defense has had no answers up to the interception. So uh, Cal's defense really has to figure out how to stop this run. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Time's going to tick away. And I believe IUP is just going to let the clock run out and let the third quarter commence. So fourth quarter will be coming around. And this is where games have been made or broken in the past, Zach. We've seen it the past three years. And I'm sure, again, we're going to see it again this year. So when we come back, the fourth quarter will come around at Miller Stadium. Stay tuned. I'm sure it's going to be exciting right here on CUTV. Welcome you back to fourth quarter action here at Miller Stadium at Indiana, Pennsylvania. As you see the American flag waving in all of its glory, 50 stars, 13 bars. And that is why we are in one of the greatest nations in America, in, in the world rather, and that is the United States of America. So uh, it's always great to see the colors never bleeding, always staying strong as we live again in one of the best nations all throughout the world. As fourth quarter action will commence here. California's defense not holding so strong against IUP's offense so far this game. But Cal U needs to make something happen on defense if they want to have a chance in this one. Only down by one point. You never know how one play can change a game. But you need another turnover or you need some sort of offensive production as they've had none yet so far this game. And one key thing was California only had one offensive possession in the third quarter. That's not going to help if they're going to try and tie this game up. They need to get some opportunities with the ball and not just have your defense produce for you. And Finklia is on the carry on that one, and he's going to be brought down the backfield for a loss of about two yards to start the first play of the fourth quarter. It looks like number six, Jawan Bryant, in to start the tackles for California, a name we have not called yet today. He is out there right now. I do not know exactly what position he plays. He's not listed in the two deep, but the numerical roster, and that does not have the positions on it. Looks like he's lining up at linebacker, though, Tyler. Yeah, I believe you're right. Williams checks back into the game again on second and 12 for the Crimson Hawks. Williams a single back. Two receivers, two boxes left. Box takes a snap, hands off to the right side. Williams is going to bounce around the backfield and be brought down right around the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one yard to show for it. It's going to be third and 11 for the Crimson Hawks. And that time, a great job by number 99, Anthony McPoyle, a freshman nose tackle, able to clog the hole and not allow Williams to get to the outside. It looked like he was going to bounce off his tackles and start running, but McPoyle there to wrap him down and get him for maybe a one yard gain. It brings up third and 11 from the 43 yard line. It's gonna be interesting, Zach, to see how California right now, actually, I'm, I'm just gonna transition to this. California's defense really amped up right now, getting the away side stance into it. They're looking for a big stop here on third down and they could really afford to have one. Box takes a snap, hands it off to Williams and he's brought down the backfield and that'll be a loss of about two yards and IUP is gonna be faced with a fourth and about 13. 
And it looks like they will punt the ball away, pin California deep in their own zone. Best thing that can happen for California is possibly a touchback on this one. Trey Johnson back to return, and California's offense is going to have to produce on this drive. You don't know how many more drives you're going to be able to have in this game. You only had one in the third quarter. If you only have one in the fourth quarter, you have to make it count this time. Best case scenario for California would actually be a block right now, Zach. I'm sure they would love to see that happen. And they're going to stack the line right now to try to make it happen. Not enough to get through there, almost. But Johnson's just going to let that bounce back, and it's going to bounce into the end zone. That's going to result in a touchback. Good call, Zach, as the ball will be brought out right around the 25-yard line. So go, let's go ahead and look at the D2Football.com top 25, and there you see California ranked 25, Indiana ranked number eight right now. So uh, these two teams are obviously very good, and they're showing why right here. It's a low-scoring game, but it's a very good game. If you've been watching through the first three quarters of action, you've seen that. Uh, so good defense from IUP, stopping California's high productive offense as of late, causing California to bring in a backup quarterback to lead their offense at James Harris. And now uh, IUP, uh, Cal U only getting points on defense from a Dewey McDonald interception return. So Harris has to make something happen here. Uh, not a lot of reps as the quarterback yet this season as he takes a snap and hands it off to Nick Grissom up the middle. Nick Grissom goes through a couple holes and he'll be brought down right around the 29-yard line. A good run there for Nick Grissom. And Nick Grissom has really been one of the most productive runners for California this season. I'm surprised he doesn't get more playing time based on the outside runs and the yards he gets on those. It makes it a second and a very short one. I've been saying it all season, Zach. I think Nick Grissom deserves some more time behind uh, the halfback position. He's been very productive. As he hands it off to Fiore, Fiore is going to, I think, be short of the first down. We'll see what the referees decide on. It looks like he might be just inches short, Tyler. I don't think with the spot they gave him, they're going to give him first down, and they do not. It'll bring up third down. California really has to convert here if they want to keep the drive going and try and get into the end zone. This is a big play for California. I'm surprised not to see a quarterback sneak here, but they're gonna let Harris run the offense a little bit. They're gonna hand it off to Fiore. Fiore's gonna get the necessary yards for the first down, gain of about two yards. But nonetheless, that's gonna move the stick, Zach, and that's what California needed. And Fiore right there, able to bowl his way through the pins of IUP's defensive line and get the short two yard gain and give Cal U a new set of downs at about the 31 yard line or 32 yard line, excuse me. As Miley Cyrus says, he came in like a wrecking ball, and that's what he did. Full house offense for Harris. Harris drops back, throws deep, has a receiver there. Quad Scott not able to get a grasp on that ball, bounces it between him, his own hands for a little bit, just not able to come down with it officially. And that is two times now that Kawan Scott has been targeted deep by James Harris and not able to come down with it. The first one went through his hands. That one he almost came down with. I was actually looking for maybe a possible penalty flag around the 40, the 35 yard line, maybe possible offensive pass interference based on the way the defender went down, but it looks like his feet just got tangled, so it's now second down. Harris under center. Tries to draw that IEP defense off, uh, off size, but not able to do so successfully. Under the shotgun formation, twins left. Harris takes a snap, looks left, he's gonna throw but he throws to absolutely no one. Kawan Scott and Harris not able to communicate well on that play. Uh, Harris expected him to maybe come back on that one. And that's actually CJ Goodwin, number 85, not 15, Tyler. So it was a miscommunication there. Goodwin running the wrong route, I believe, and went upfield instead of crossing out on an out pattern towards the sideline. Brings up a big third and 10 with 11-14 left for California. My mistake on that one. Nonetheless, Harris under center, drops back, has some time, throws to his right side. He has Mike Williams there, but way overthrown by about five yards. And that'll bring up fourth and 10 for the Vulcans. And I'm sure you're gonna see the punt team come on the field. And a big opportunity there. We mentioned before, Harris has a very strong arm. That time a little too strong. Mike Williams is not the fastest receiver in the world. It was thrown maybe three to five yards over his head not able to come down with it if Williams is a little bit faster that might be a touchdown and this game could be tied now Surratt out to punt for I would say maybe the eighth time on today but he's done a really good job so far snap is taken and the punt is away almost blocked again and that ball will bounce backwards 
and it'll be taken around the 29 yard line. And that's where Box is going to set up shop. And now, Tyler, we're going to uh, look at our tweet of the week. We do not actually have one, ladies and gentlemen. So it's your job at home to tweet us at CUTV underscore PA. Get your tweet read live on air. You can tweet us about anything, the game that's currently going on. Looking forward uh, to Cal's future schedule a certain player that you think is doing well, anything of the such. We need your tweets if you want them read live on air. Absolutely. We always look forward to reading other people's insights on what's going on in the other area, whether it's high school, whether it's D2 football. We enjoy reading them, so please send them in. We like to see what the fans have to say. First and 10 for the Crimson Hawks. Box takes a snap. Play action fake to the right. It's thrown, and it is caught by Barnes and he'll be dragged out of bounds right around the 47 yard line. Great first down play for the Crimson Hawks and the offense continues to produce. And Mike Box and Terrell Barnes really starting to become best friends out there. You see the catch with defender draped all over him. Barnes has really been well rounded at running down the sideline with the ball and not stepping out of bounds too early or not getting any feet in. And that's what he brings to the IEP offense that he's done so well today. Box under center. He's going to take the snap. He rolls to the left. Finds a receiver wide open. That's Barnes again. Avoids one tackle and goes out of bounds right around the 41 yard line. That's going to be complete. And that's going to be another first down. And it looks like Tyler, honestly, there could have been a holding penalty on that play against IEP's offensive line, but there was no call. I saw a couple of defensive linemen being held. But nonetheless, it will be another first down for IUP and a start to another new drive for the Crimson Hawks. Absolutely. Cal's defense needs to find a way to step up right now to stop this IUP high-powered offense from driving on them. They've let them drive all game, but haven't let up too many points, only 14. Box hands it off to Williams up the left side, and they stop the run on first down. Short gain for Williams. Again, about one on that play. Williams. Since his injury, not been able to break off a lot of the big runs. He might be hampered by that a little bit. He's still limping a little bit, we can see, as he's walking back towards the huddle. So we might have to see if Williams is really not letting on and how bad he is hurt and trying to play through it in such an important game. It is a very important game, but you can't let injury from a running back hurt themselves on offense. Only nine seconds on the play clock. So IEP's going to have to hurry up and get the playoff before the play clock expires. Two, one, and that will be a timeout actually called before the delay of game penalty. Uh, looks like Mike Box was at least signaling for the timeout. I don't know if he got it off in time. There actually was an illegal substitution, Tyler. There was 12 people on the field for IUP in the huddle. And the coach, Kurt Signetti, arguing with the official Looks like there's going to be a huddle here, complaining that Bucks did get the timeout call in time. We'll have to see though, but the illegal substitution, I don't know if that would negate that even if he called the timeout, there were still 12 men on the field. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see, Zach. Uh, the referees are gonna huddle and talk about this one a little bit and uh, try to make the appropriate call here. Um, nonetheless, things not looking good for IUP on this second down play. They're already driven back a few yards. They have the yard marker placed at the 45 yard line, but we'll see what the referees conclude on this one. So the timeout will have been called before the delay of game and there is no penalty for illegal substitution on that play. So the referees decided that it was a bad call. But let's go ahead and see what us here at CUTV are going on here in the upcoming telecast. You got October 1st, Vulcan Volleyball against Fairmont State at Cal U. October 5th, Vulcan Football at Westchester, a long, long ways away in Philadelphia. October 7th, we got a doubleheader for women's hockey coming up 
on a Monday night. High school football, October 11th, Best Center at Frazier. That's going to be a great high school game to watch. October 12th, we have the homecoming parade in the morning and then following right after Vulcan football against Clarion. So a busy, busy schedule for us coming up here. Our production set, our production crew uh, here at CUTV does a lot of work, about 85 to 90 shoots a year. Uh, so we're a very busy group of people, but nonetheless, we enjoy what we do, Zach. That's why we're here in school to do it. Uh, if we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't be doing it. We probably would have changed our majors by now. Yeah, probably would have changed our majors by now. But just enjoying the atmosphere here today, the game. Uh, such an important Cole Bowl, the fifth one that they've ever done, Tyler. IEP looking to win their first. California looking to hold strong and win their fifth in a row. There is nine minutes and 11 seconds left to see who the victor will be after the game ends. IEP under center. Hands it off to Williams. Up the left side he goes. He breaks a big run, but he's hit hard. And he'll be brought down right around the 30-yard line, maybe the 31. So a big run there from Williams to get a good third down play, a second down play, and that'll set up third and short. That's going to be about a third and one. Tyler, maybe one and a half. A good run by Williams. He was taken out from under him and dove forward for a few more yards before he was actually down. I'm sure I will see another run from Williams here on this play just because he's been gauging the Cal defensive line for so many big runs today. I'm not going to be surprised if they run it again here. Runs it again up the middle. He goes to Williams. Williams. I'm sure we'll get enough with the forward progress for the first down as he does. He's brought around, brought down around the 29-yard line. But going back to the Cole Bowl, Zach, I'm glad you mentioned it because the Cole Bowl today wouldn't have been possible without the sponsors, Alpha Natural Resources, Caterpillar, Console Energy, United Mine Workers of America, and, of course, the Washington County Tourism Agency. Uh, thank you again for your support of the Cole Bowl, making it as big as it is now after this being the fifth year of it. It gets bigger and better every year. More sponsors, the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance really pitching in, making a very nice, beautiful trophy in the Coal Pelt uh, Trophy. So we'll see which one of these teams gets to hoist that thing at the end of this game. Box looks left, throws, finds his receiver. That's the fullback number 42, sheds a tackle, and he'll be brought down right around the 20-yard line. And great pass right there. Number 42 for IUP is Dom Maggio. He is a junior fullback for the Crimson Hawks. He breaks the defender, able to juke out of it, and then he gets hit hard near the crown of his helmet, taken down, but it'll be a second down play and one yard to go. Cal U's red zone defense has proven fairly strong, only letting up one big one, uh, one touchdown in the red zone so far this game, and now it's from a Williams rush. So they've been holding strong, and they need to continue to hold strong in the red zone now more than ever, now that there's only about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Finklia takes it up the middle, and he is stopped, maybe forward progress of a, of a gain of one, maybe two yards. But that might be enough for the first down. We'll have to see where the officials spot the ball. There are actually two different spots from each official. And they're going to have to measure this one. Good call by the referees to take the measurement. You don't want to get a bad call here late in the game. So it looks like they're going to actually keep it short. Second and one inch. It's close. It's real close. Here come the six now. They're going to go ahead and measure it. Good call by the referees. Uh, it's 648 left here in the game. This could decide a big first down. It will be inches short, Tyler. So IUP with a third and inches now. I'm sure they'll run the ball. Cal U might stack up with eight on in the box against the run play, but based on how Williams has run for IEP and all their other rushers, I don't know if that's even gonna be enough to stop them on such a short third down play. No, I agree with you, Zach. It's been hard to stop this running back so far this game. Any running back for IUP that they've thrown out there has been successful against this California 3-3-5 defense. And it's a quarterback keeper. I think he might be short, Zach. Actually, after that second, uh, after that second attempt, it might have been enough to get the first down. And that it is going to give them the first down as the yard markers now start to move. And it switches to 
a one from a four, so that's going to be a big conversion for IUP. That's going to keep their drive alive. And that was a quarterback sneak from Mike Box. At first, he did not get it, but some second effort right there, falling off the pile and diving forward, and he was able to get the necessary yardage needed to keep IUP's drive going with 6-12 left in the game, still up by seven. If you get a touchdown here, it's going to really take a lot for Cal's offense to come back in this one. It has happened before, but the odds are stacked against him in that situation. Handoff up the middle to Williams. He breaks through the defense, finds a wide open hole, almost like Moses parting the great sea, and allows Williams to get a couple yards there for make it second in about two. And another great run by Williams. At the end of the third quarter, IUP had 169 rushing yards total. I'm sure that has to be near 200 for the total rushing yards. Just the way that IUP has been running against California has been very spectacular today. Easily has to be their best part of their offense. Snap is taken. Williams are running up the middle. He's keeping his legs moving and almost gets to the end zone, but he stops short. Uh, a big rush there. It's going to set up first down and goal, but nonetheless not able to get in. But he's going to be very close there, marking it at about the four-yard line. So a first and goal opportunity now for IUP. I'm sure they'll just run it with Williams again, try and get his way into the end zone for some more pay dirt, make it a two-possession game, and force California to really have something spectacular coming out, out of their back pocket to try and get a victory here today. Three new defenders checking in for California. They want some fresh bodies out there for this stop if they can do so successfully. Flag on the play. Looks like it might have been a false start from the offense. And that's what it's going to be. So that's going to push them back five yards. It'll be first and goal now from about the nine-yard line for the Crimson Hawks. So that helps California out big time on defense. And we'll have to see if those five yards matter at all. If California can stop IUP short of the end zone based on these next few plays. I'm sure if they have fourth down, they might go for the field goal. They might go for it, though, pinning California so far back in their own zone. But those five yards might matter in the long run in the next few plays if IUP is not successful on these next few. Absolutely. California's offense is not very successful, so pinning them back might not be a bad idea. Handoff is to Williams, up the middle, untouched. Touchdown, IUP. They put another six points up on the board against California's defense. And De'Antoine Williams, excuse me, on another touchdown run. I believe that is his second of the day, running right at you. We see camera three down there on the sideline. Allison Sinos are running right at the camera. And Williams just having a spectacular offensive day for the Crimson Hawks. Not even one hand touched on Williams on that touchdown run. And that shows you what kind of the defense California's been bringing all game. And the field goal, the extra point is blocked by number eight for Cal U. That's Rodney, Grill, Rodney Gillen. So that's one less point for IUP. As we come back, the rest of the fourth quarter action is coming your way. Stay tuned. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, and cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CUTV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And welcome back to the George P. Miller Stadium here in Indiana, Pennsylvania. And as you see the scoreboard presented to you by First Niagara, Indiana leads uh, California 20 to seven. And California has some work to do now with 418 left in the game. 
Oh, they have a two possession lead, IUP does so. California has a lot to make up for. It has happened in the past, a cold bowl being a big reason behind that. A lot to, on the line in this game. The kickoff is taken and it'll be kneeled down in the end zone for the touchback. I think a good time, a good time to do that now because you don't want to have to, you know, force anything on special teams. Maybe get a short return and pin yourself back further than a touchback would be. Absolutely, Tyler and Terrell Roberson. I'm surprised he didn't do that earlier in the game. He didn't get as big returns as he probably wanted to. He had one big return in the game that I can recall. Now California's going to start at the 25-yard line. James Harris is back out there. It's going to take a quick drive and a possible onside kick or send your defense out there and try and stop IUP to get back in this one. We're going to see what Harris is made of in these upcoming four minutes, Zach, as he's back to throw. He throws to the left, able to find his receiver. I believe that's number 85 again, Zach. And that is C.J. Goodwin, Tyler, on the reception. So it's good for a quick first down. The clock will stop at 4.12 after getting out of bounds. Getting a good first down conversion right there. Let's see if California can keep it going on this drive. And a lot on the line here for Harris as well. If he performs well in these last upcoming minutes, you might see him start again next week. Uh, but only time will tell. Harris under center. Takes a snap, throws to the left again. And it'll be brought down and caught with forward progress right around the 40-yard line. That'll set up second in about six yards. And I believe that's C.J. Goodwin again. So Mike Harris, or excuse me, James Harris, really finding a lot of success with Goodwin. I'm sure they've spent a lot of time together on second team in practice. He probably feels comfortable throwing to Goodwin. It's so late in a game. Absolutely. Harris drops back again, throws the right to Pete. One defender thrown to Mike Williams, and he'll go out of bounds right around the 50-yard line. Another first down, and that stops the clock again. California working the clock to their advantage now rather than IUP running the clock away when they're on offense. And look at that replay right there, getting away from the defender for IUP. Almost looks like a Ben Roethlisberger kind of play, throwing his arm over the defender, getting away, completing the pass downfield to Mike Williams, keeping the drive going for Cal U. The Crimson Hawk of IEP amping up the... T oh, there's a flag on the play. As I was saying, the Crimson Hawk of IEP trying to get the fans into it here. We'll see what the call on the field is. And that is number five, Nadir Brown on the false start. So going to drive Cal back. It makes it first and 15 from the 45 with just over... We have 3.16 left in the fourth quarter, Tyler. Harris under center. Takes a snap, drops back, avoids the defense. And there's the holding call there, but a dropped interception would have negated that call. But there's a holding call on the field, Zach. I mean, it was almost blatant there. The defender, good job by there, getting free. That was number 94 for IEP, Shane Meisner. And now California driven back a first and 30. It's going to take a lot to keep this drive going. You have four plays to do it, though. You cannot stop on third down anymore. You have to keep it going because you're down by two possessions. So they have four plays to do it. That's an average of seven yards a play. They have to get the job done if they want to keep this game in reach. The crowd on their feet for IUP. They're cheering on their Hawks. Harris back. Throws deep to the left side, has no receiver open, and that ball is intercepted. And that will surely be the nail in the coffin for IUP. Number 31 on the pick on that one. That's Jordan McRae. Uh, rather, 31 for IUP. Eric Williams, Jordan McRae for California University is the one wearing 31. And Tyler, that one right there, just like it might have been some miscommunication with Harrison and his receivers. Receiver was nowhere in sight. IUP player became the receiver on that one. Came down with it, judged it, came down both feet inbounds. The interception that looks like that is going to seal this one as IUP has a 20 to seven lead with just under three minutes left. I, uh, IUP ended up winning the PSAC West, uh, West last year, Zach. Uh, for the first time in over eight years that it hasn't been in the hands of California. Now, California looks like they might be coughing up the Cole Pale Trophy uh, to IUP also for the first time ever. So IUP proving themselves as a dominant team, not only in the PSAC West, but in NCAA Division II as well. Absolutely, Tyler, and that's why they were ranked number seven in the nation 
in all of Division Two based on the AFCA poll, number eight on the D2Football.com poll. They're going to reset the play clock to 2.52. California called the timeout, and that's going to be their first one of the half. So let's go ahead and look at IUP's upcoming schedule and then followed by California's schedule. But we take a look at IUP's schedule. And there you see they're playing California right now. Should be a win. They follow with, uh, with Millersville. Then at Slippery Rock, at home against Edinburgh. Then you go two away, Mercyhurst and Clarion. Back home for Gannon, and then at Shippensburg. But those easy three wins in the beginning of the year, in my opinion, Zach. Uh, South Connecticut State. Then you got Cheney and Seton Hill. Uh, Seton Hill as well. Seton Hill just emerging themselves into the PSAC this year. So California's road ahead. Getting here was a little bit difficult there uh, against Hillsdale, but it opens up a little bit against Kutztown and Edinburgh. They have a loss probably here to Indiana. Then they go to Westchester for another big game that they have to really focus up on. Then they follow that up with Clarion, Seton Hill, Gannon, Slippery Rock, Mercyhurst, and Millersville or the PSAC Championship, depending on how the rest of the conference pans out in the upcoming weeks. And that game next week against Westchester, although it's not a PSAC West matchup, it's going to play heavily in how the region standings pan out as Williams will lose a few yards, make it third and ten. But Westchester is a top 25 team. Going to Westchester is going to be a very daunting task. So that might not help your West standings, but it'll help you in the region trying to get you into the NCAA playoffs. Absolutely. Only 2.47 left on the clock now, Zach, as California takes another timeout. It's going to be third and ten now for the Crimson Hawks. A first down would surely end the game. However, California looks to try to milk as much clock as possible, try to get a couple more points on the board and make this thing a little bit interesting at least. Uh, with time against them right now, it's going to be really difficult. You can never say never, but it's going to be a really tough time here with only 2.47 left. Yeah, we thought last year Cody Nuzo missing the extra point under a minute left. Might have been the game ender. Comes out, kicks an onside kick. Cal recovers, and he kicks the game-winning field goal. We thought that was a miracle in the making. It's going to take a lot more for Cal to come away with the victory today, especially with only 2.47 left. It can happen, Tyler, but it's going to take a lot, especially if uh, uh, California is going to be out of all of their timeouts. A lot of luck on California's side will help their uh, help their offense here and help their defense as well come up with a stop here on third down. I expect nothing fancy from IUP to end their drive here, but we're going to go ahead and find out. Box under center. He's going to take the snap. Hand off to Williams. Williams finds a hole, but that closes quickly, and that will cause... IUP to go to fourth down in about eight yards. Timeout called from California. So that'll be their last one of the half. So even if they do get the ball here and score, Zach, they have no timeouts to work with. So they have to, if they get the onside kickback, they have to work the uh, sidelines to their advantage and try to work the clock a little bit. We saw it like we saw earlier them with them doing. But again, it's a real tough task to overcome. And if I was IUP's defense, I would play more of a uh, sideline defense based on because California can't stop the clock unless they get a first down and rush up to the line. They have to get out of bounds to stop it. So if IUP plays more to the sideline, leave the middle of the field open for some intermediate routes, it might help their defense secure the win. If California can't rush up to the line quickly, get a spike off or even try and air it down the field for a quick score. And also James Harris, not so accurate in this game, Zach, so you rely on him to become more accurate, and he's already shaken up from uh, drives past, so that's not going to help at all. The punt's away, and it's a long one. Trey Johnson underneath it. He's going to take it up the middle, then up to the left side, but he'll be brought down right around the 35-yard line. And there's some uh, inappropriate actions in the middle of the field right now between an IUP defender and a uh, California player. I think this is going to go against IUP, Zach, but we're going to find out. The California player was defenseless as the IUP player was kind of on top of him. It looked like he was holding him down to the ground and putting him in a punishing position. And we'll get the call from the ref now. First 
So that will bring California out right to midfield, Tyler. So that gives them very good starting position. If they can score quick here, they might have enough time to try and get the onside kick. If they do, they might leave themselves enough time to have another miracle pop out and surprise us all. Cody Nuzo is a miracle worker on the field, Zach, especially when it comes to pressure situations. We've seen it in the past, and we might even get to see it again. What a treat that would be. But it all starts with this offensive possession here, Zach. you got to work the sidelines, and James Harris has to become a confident quarterback, and we're going to see if it happens. Harris takes a snap, looks right, finds a receiver in the middle of the field as he's going to take it up the left side. He's got some open running room, but he's got to get out of bounds as he finally does. Number five on the reception on that one, that's Dendeer Brown. And a great run there, catches the ball right in the middle of the field. And we'll look at the replay now, able to find a way around some defenders, gain some more yards, work his way downfield, and also get out of bounds, stop the clock. Now at the 35 yard line with 2.09 left in the game. Harris under center. He's going to take the snap, looks left, and throws immediately. Desmian Green was the attended receiver, but a little bit of miscommunication there. That's where Cody Schroeder, in, being in, in the situation, might actually help you because he has that connection with his receiver, whereas James Harris coming in as a backup doesn't have that same connection with his receivers. This offense is built around Cody Schroeder, and having a backup come in like James Harris, who might prefer a different style of offense, might be a little bit difficult to overcome. Absolutely, Tyler. It's like last year when Schroeder played in Peter Lalek's offense. It's the same thing going on here. Pass is thrown. It is intercepted by IUP. Number 14 on that one will be Marco Pecora, and that will definitely end the game now for Cal U. There's no chance of them coming back now. A minute 49 left. No timeouts to work with. All IUP now has to do is to hand it off to Williams or any other running back. Take the victory formation after a while, and that'll be the end of the game and the end of the fifth cool bowl. Absolutely, Tyler. And the big thing is that five turnovers really killed California today. It was the one thing I touched on California had the advantage in before the game. Um, California had a plus three turnover margin, as you see the Cole Pale Trophy right there. That will be going to Indiana University of Pennsylvania this year for the first time in the history of the Coal Bowl. California will not win it. So a great job by IEP today trying to get their first Coal Pale Trophy, also helping them in the PSAC West standings. Absolutely, as they go ahead and assume the victory position as they deserve. Uh, a great game overall by both teams, Zach. And again, we just want to thank the sponsors of the Cool Bowl again. That's the Alpha Natural Resources, Caterpillar, Consul Energy, United Mine Workers of America, and of course the Washington County Tourism Agency. And we would like to thank our sponsor as well, First Niagara, for sponsoring our scoreboard, as you saw throughout the game. So it's great to see sponsorships coming in to Division Two and coming in through our telecast as well, because without their help, none of this would be possible. Absolutely, Tyler. It's always great to see some sponsors helping us out on the CUTV crew and also promoting the game as well. It was a great game today. IUP just played a little bit better, especially rushing the ball. Cal U came in, stopping the rush pretty uh, well so far in the season, but just let IUP and especially DeAntoine Williams run all over them today. That is what I believe propelled the Crimson Hawks to victory. Absolutely. Uh, good offensive strategy from IUP. IUP did their homework. Plain and simple, Cal U has had trouble um, coming in with this 3-3-5 defense. They were expected to struggle with the run. They haven't in the first three games of the season, but now in this fourth game and the most important game of their season, they do struggle against the run. So they soften up to the run, try to look to stop the pass, but Mike Box, a good effort as the quarterback to make sure that he makes things work on offense as well. And there you see John Pippi, the president of the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance, as he's going to present the donated trophy by the Lippincott family to IUP, the Indiana University of Pennsylvania Crimson Hawks, their first ever Coal Bowl victory. However, they do lead the series between these two teams. Now 56 wins overall against Cal U in their long, long history of games. And now it's going to be something to see how Cal U recovers next week against Westchester 
and then how IUP plays the rest of their season. They control their destiny now. If they can win out, they will win the West because they will have a perfect record, but they still have teams like Clarion, Ganon, um, Slippery, Slippery Rock, and Mercyhurst on the schedule. Those are not easy teams, especially this season. It's a big shakeup in the West. Anything could happen. So both these teams still have to play hard the rest of the year and see how things shake up in the PSAC. About the official statistician here, Zach, but I would say number 21 for IUP gets the MVP award. But that's going to do it for us here on CUTV for our production and crew back in the truck and out of the field with the cameras and everything. And for us here in the booth, for Zach Lamar, my name is Tyler Harris, and we thank you very much for watching our presentation of Cold Bowl 5 2013 from here at Miller Stadium. Thank you for watching.